beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the Word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. inside and outside Lord, we give you all the praise. We bless you. We honor you. We ask, oh God, that you will bless us. Thank you for the power of your word and its ability to change, to transform us. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray one prayer. Father, visit me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Cry to him. Ask him for a very great visitation by his word. Shalom prati kesit alia ko shabra hasita pastor. Jakota sabadi kati alagosh. Pray and cry for a visit. Jesus, you love me too much, oh. too much, oh. too much, oh. let's just love, oh. my God, you love me too much, too much, oh. tonight we thank you for your love for this ministry we thank you for your love thank you for access to light thank you for the signs the wonders and the miracles that you do in and through us lord we thank you because tonight again you will prove yourself mighty in our midst and we decree and we declare that jesus himself will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Good evening. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. It's good to have everyone around. Very quickly before we start, I want to appreciate, I'm told, um, where is she? I can't find her. Um, oh, Pastor Petrock's wife, Pastor Twain, God bless you. Let's honor her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. She was covered somewhere and I cannot find her. Thank you, Ma. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Very wonderful couple doing a great work for God in Mina. Influencing, contending.
for kingdom relevance part two we started part one last week contending for kingdom relevance part two please i'd like to have your attention tonight i have a lot to share tonight every time i'm sharing something that i consider to be important my prayer as always is that we place the same value on those informations in this kingdom we are glorified not just by the will of god alone but our access to the truths of the kingdom acts chapter 13 please and verse 36 acts chapter 13 and verse 36 last week we started with that scripture as our text let me just open it from here acts chapter 13 and verse 36 The Bible says, for David, reading from King James now, for David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. The verse of emphasis is the A part. It says, for David, after he had served his own generation, Amplified says that he served the purposes of God in his generation and we began to consider last week how that it is not enough to serve god alone you must serve god within the context of your generation please if you do not have the teaching do well to get it it is very important that um, you lay your hand on that teaching and listen to it and um, we stress the need to not only serve god but to serve God in our generation. It is possible for a man to serve God and not be relevant within the context of a generation. Are we together? That you can serve God with your all, well-meaning, sincere, but not be able to serve God in a way that inspires a generation. And I think my goal as a person, much more than being in ministry, is to be able to inspire a generation to love and to passionately pursue after God. If I'm able to achieve that in my lifetime, then I think I was able to contribute significantly to the program of God on earth. We must be able to inspire a generation, and that cannot happen outside of influence. I told us that to serve God profitably and to inspire a generation to do the same, we must contend for the requisite level of kingdom influence that it would take to represent the purpose of God on earth. If you are with me, say amen. amen. We took the A part last week. Just uh, we have, I have five points for you here. And point number one was that you must know God. Are we still together? Dust your notes. Let's look at it. Let's get to work. Daniel 11.32. The Bible says the B part. It says, but the people. Daniel 11.32. But the people that do know their God. But the people that do know their God, the Bible says that they shall be strong and shall do exploits. There is a relationship, as we established last week, between the knowledge, the personal revealed knowledge of God and your depth and degree of exploits. And we said according to Psalm 24 and verse 6, just doing a quick recap, how that Jacob for us is the scriptural portrait of what God's idea of seeking him is. That every time God says we should seek him, he doesn't leave us to guess how to seek him. He exemplifies um, his desire, his intention, and how his pattern of pursuing him in the person Jacob. The Bible says there is a generation that should seek the Lord in the similitude of Jacob. Are we together? And so we take from there point number two. Now, please pay attention, pay attention. When the word of God is coming, Satan is also at work to steal from people um, the implanted word, the word that is able to profit them. You don't just rise in life by your desire and intentions alone. It is the quality of the word that you receive within your spirit. The second key in contending for generational relevance the second key is that you must be transformed write it down 
transformation is the second key we're going to be dealing with tonight that no man is able to influence a generation please play the strings for me no man is able to influence a generation effectively effectively except they are transformed are we together yes please so it matters that we are transformed and the bible says in romans when you read from verse um, chapter 12 and verse 1 it says um i beseech thee therefore brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god calls it your reasonable act of service verse 2 says and be not conformed listen very carefully to this world the word world there is the greek word aeon it means the mindset the stronghold the thinking pattern that comes with the age it says but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of god transformation is a key if you want to sustain a position where you are able to influence a generation you must be transformed in this sense to be transformed means to have a superior belief system write it down please let's deal with belief systems a bit it is the one reason why many of us may never be used by god in a very notable way we are very well meaning we are very sincere but we have been unable to sustain a superior belief system everyone say belief system say it again belief system believe me brothers and sisters i want you to know that if you want to serve god profitably especially in the 21st century you must sustain a belief system that is higher than the cultural background the limitations that you have come from the territorial background that um, comes with your geography etc you will never be able to serve the purposes of the kingdom efficiently if you do not sustain a superior belief system let's discuss this a bit now many of us come from backgrounds where because of our our upbringing we have sustained thinking patterns that may be well-meaning but are not consistent with the ways of god are we together i have taught us extensively on mindsets we have discussed strongholds um, but then it will never be too much to continue to teach us until we bend to that formation that the word seeks to bring in us with respect to transformation your belief system must be higher than your background your belief system must be higher than your failures your belief system must be higher than your current level of exposure if you want to contend for relevance there are men of god women of god and churches whose relevance cannot be outside certain geographic regions because although they are anointed although they love god the biases that come with their belief systems be it cultural be it um, sociological the biases that come with their belief system will not afford them the opportunity to expand to be global in perspective to maintain or sustain a superior belief system does not mean compromising on your kingdom standards but it means to have the flexibility to be able to adjust to approach life from a global view though from a kingdom perspective you must be global in your mindset as i'm talking now there are people following from different nations and you must be able to communicate thrice in such a way and manner that in spite of their cultural limitations in spite of their sociological differences you are able to present the purposes of christ in a way that is understood and received by them anyone who cannot do that will not be relevant it's as simple as that is god speaking to us the mistake that many of us make is that when we start out something in life we keep scrounging around for people who relate with our geographic experiences as though they are the only ones we are called and sent to are we together 
I, I come from Plateau State, for instance, and I can start ministry and my entire, the design of the ministry was only for those who come within my geographic context. Anyone who is Igbo or Yoruba or from Ghana or from Australia will not be blessed by that service because the program was so designed to only minister to whoever has my kind of geographic context. That's a very dangerous understanding. You can be anointed but then God will not anoint you to be able to bless people because the limitation, you do not sustain a superior belief system. Your paradigm has not been so constructed such that you can minister to people of all races and communicate Christ. Are we blessed? It's the reason why many businesses don't rise beyond certain levels in Africa. Is because is the reason why many ministries do not go out of their localized environment. It, like I said, it doesn't mean to compromise on your standards, but to sustain the flexibility to know that you are dealing with a generation that has come from a backlog of belief systems. And that in as much as you define what you want to be your primary belief system, you must have the flexibility to be able to adjust to different cultures, are we together? To adjust to different doctrinal approaches to spirituality without being compromised. I preach in different churches regardless of their doctrinal beliefs. I am able to maintain my convictions but to be able to navigate through the tides of doctrinal and denominational differences such that you can preach Christ in a way and a manner that does not end up offending and destroying the people you are ministering to. A transformed mind satan prefers you healed in fact satan prefers you anointed without a transformed mind because he knows the oil will remain small for as long as the vessel is small are we together the increase in the oil is not dependent on god's will alone it's dependent on the size of the vessel when the woman was saying the oil is small the oil was hearing her and you can imagine the oil saying, I am not small. You have only hosted me in a small vessel. And the prophet said, I know where the problem is. Go and borrow vessels. You don't need another oil. The oil you have has infinite potentials. Expand capacity for that oil to find expression. That's why you see that some of us that are carrying the anointing of certain fathers seem to look more anointed than them. We are not more anointed than them. The anointing just came on a superior mindset. So it gave it more room for expression. Are we together? A prophet who never had the opportunity to go to school. A prophet who never had the opportunity to learn a number of languages. A prophet who never had the opportunity to travel outside of Nigeria, outside of his physical environment. There is a perspective that even the knowledge of God cannot break. So he will communicate Christ with the limitation of that perspective. If you come now and receive that same anointing with a renewed mind, you now give the anointing a broader perspective to be able to manifest itself. You need a transformed mind, brothers and sisters. You don't just need anointing on your head. You need a transformed mind. The law of the mind is a principle that i have taught us again and again i watch people did you know i honestly watch people and many times i feel sad i don't even know how to start praying for them because i know that the prayer i want to pray for them will not be answered the 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 faultiness of their belief system will necessitate that that answer never arrives to their life are we together there are people who, they may be attacked by demons, yes. They may be doing a lot of things, but the kind of result they are crying for requires a certain level of renewal and transformation. And because they have not contended for that level of renewal, you know that that prayer will never be answered in their life. And it's a very frustrating thing for a man of God because you, you, you can't tell somebody who is crying and saying, Ah, Apostle, can God show up for me in this area? You already know that that thing will not be answered. As far as that person remains at that level of thinking, that prayer will never be answered in his life. It's a very difficult thing. That's why sometimes when I'm counseling people, I just pray for them. Because it's very difficult. 
you look at the person talking and you see the backlog of limiting belief systems that empower the gates of hell over the life of the individuals and then you see the the intention the sincerity the purity of their heart you know what they desire you see how true the desire is but you know that that desire will never come to pass that way except they contend for a superior belief system. You look at people and you know that this guy is already pegged to his loyalty to cultural beliefs. Cultural beliefs that are not kingdom compliant. And you know that as far as this international context of ministry that this brother or sister is desire of... You, of. You can have visions in the realm of the spirit of yourself having branches all around. You will not go anywhere. Many of us do not have the level of adjustment that allows us to be global in our approach. Are we together now? Just because you see a lady look like this or a guy look like this, it, it, it can get you so offended to a point that you cannot communicate Christ to the person. And now that's the person who wants 10,000 members. You cannot have 10,000 members who all believe your context, your cultural context or doctrinal context. That means you are going to create a system of bias in that church that will be clear to a certain group of people that you are not sympathetic to them. And very soon there will be all versions of revolt coming from their frustrations. It is not God nor his inability to reach us, but that our level of transformation has not ascended enough to be able to capture that dimension of spiritual possibility that we seek. If God is speaking to you, say Amen. amen. Many people want finances. And they think all there is to finances is business. You hear them pray and fast. They even write, oh God, I'm trusting you for one, one million per month. And they have no respect for money. They just call it one. Whereas their thinking level, notice, even financially, look at the, the figure that recycles around your life. It's a reflection of the only amount your mind can host. If they bless you higher than that, your thinking will reduce it to a circle. Some people will never go past 100,000. Give them 10 million in two weeks. It has returned back. Because your mindset is like a calibrator. Like a thermostat of an iron. It pegs at a level of thinking and stops there. There are pastors, the moment they cross 100 members, something must happen in that church and return the members back to 100. It's, it's not about any bias for growth. It's because they have not yet contended through transformation to the level of leadership that can make them to be able to pastor and lead that number of people. Before you cry that heaven releases something to you, find out whether you have created space through a transformed mind to host that dimension of spiritual reality. Otherwise, you are going to waste resources. Are we blessed? transformation i've taught us that you are a reflection of what you think about now please don't think this is some positive thinking teaching no matter who you are you will never be able to serve the purposes of the kingdom above and beyond your level of understanding of god of life and the transformation that your mind gives god you see the danger of serving God without a transformed mind is that because some measure of anointing will still be on your life, though you are not transformed, the limitation of your mindset will ride along with the anointing and make people think it's the anointing that is making you behave that way. If koinonia is not excellent, for instance, you will think that the kind of anointing on Joshua Selman is what makes for you to not be excellent so now i can use my imperfection in the area of excellence to mean just because the sick are getting healed through my life it must be the anointing that is making me trivialize the need for excellence and when you receive the anointing from my life you will also receive the impartation of the limitation to a life of excellence and so you see people mentor after mentor impartation after impartation and the lapse that lack of transformation brings will continue moving and we will make it look as though it was God or it came with the anointing. No. A transformed mind will produce a transformed life. 
a transformed life will produce a destiny that is worthy of emulation nobody will emulate you just because you think you are born again there are many people who are worthy of being listened to but not worthy of being followed that you are list that people are listening to you listening to you does not mean that they can follow you it takes more than good preaching to be emulated they must look at the construction of your belief systems to be superior enough to be worthy of them to mold their life after your belief you're not just going to come with one greek and hebrew word one suit and one watch one car and one house and then believe that people will follow you you cannot inspire a generation that way your belief system must be so superior and it will tell on the kind the quality and the frequency of results that you get and then it will cause someone to say look i will follow after you as you follow after christ nobody just follows you because there are all kinds of men of god moving up and down yoking young people in the name of sons and daughters you must follow me but the son and the daughter is seeing a, an inferior life where the life you are living does not reflect the dimension god is showing him yet you are still pressing him and saying you must follow me and he said mr man i will follow you if you transit to reflect how my future should be be transformed you can never truly rise above your mindset i meet people all the time i travel to several places and most times the people relate with me within the context of their cultures and i am grateful to god for teaching me the ability to have flexibility in belief systems otherwise i don't know how many churches how many regions i would hurt with statements not knowingly i would hurt with behavioral patterns you see reinhard bonke and all these evangelists when they come to africa they try to look for african attires and wear they try to learn thank you and god bless you even in yoruba you think they like it like that they are trying to create a system that makes them look sympathetic to that territory so that their voice will be heard are we together you must sustain a superior belief system you can go to a church where they don't allow you to move up and down around the pulpit do you have a superior belief system to stand and conform with the way that church believes in the operation and still teach christ there are churches that you may not be allowed to pray in tongues openly while you are preaching don't just say me i'm like this so you don't know my encounter with the holy ghost when if we everywhere I, they must know that i'm an addict then you are you are going to remain small you will keep impressing the small people who think like you and never become global in your perspective is god blessing someone You must be flexible we're excellent people but we're not fools you see during the miracle service sometimes someone is healed and maybe you are taking the testimony and the woman cannot speak english you're not going to yoke this woman and say when is she going to learn english just because she didn't have the opportunity to learn english you yoke her no are we together we are global but we are in zaria madam speak house her are we together speak what you can speak and let someone interpret it are you getting what i'm saying now yes but at the same time i'm not going to travel to lagos or travel outside this country and go and i'm speaking and i'm giving examples that can only be understood by people in zaria many of you carry your background everywhere god is saying depart from from ai to a land flowing with milk and honey we carry that background you go somewhere and stand and raise a song that only you knows and then you are watching and seeing that i clash that symbol and they are watching you and say what in the world is going on here and you will be so impressed with yourself until you are no longer invited they have a board meeting and say no don't ever bring him again is god speaking to us you must be kingdom in your 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 approach but you must be global in your perspective when you want to become a voice to your generation you must understand that you are not a voice to yoruba people 
You are not a voice to Igbo people. You are not a voice to Hausa people. You are not a voice to Africans. You are a voice to as many as God will call. And your, the way you behave must be able to adjust in a way and manner that of course you will be sympathetic to the soil where you are domiciled in. But at the same time be flexible enough for people of all races and cultures to be able to find a place for themselves. A global approach to life. A superior mindset. I say it with all humility. Most, most men of God usually are invited within certain regions and certain contexts and no more. If I'm a northerner, chances are that all the churches that should invite me to preach should only be northern churches. Why? Because I relate and I'm more sympathetic to their sociological context. But that's not the case. There is nowhere in this nation and outside of this nation that God has taken me to that have not been received with joy because I have mastered the art of upgrading my understanding, my paradigm and my approach to life in a way and manner that is able to help me communicate Christ effectively. I've gone to places where an interpreter is needed. I just stand up and I think the guy is coming to tell me the time and then I just see him with a mic too. Whatever I say, he repeats it. Or automatically I know that, okay, we have to be wise in that approach. How the power of God will move with this kind of limitation, you have to find a way to walk through it. Greet the man, smile at him, and the people are already laughing because they know that that's not how you preach usually. So they are extra blessed because of the fortitude to make that adjustment. Are you seeing that now? People already know how you are in your default state. So when you go out of your way to make that adjustment, they, they, it's a show of spiritual maturity that you have the ability to have revolted and say, you invited me, please, Mr. Ma, walk out of this stage. But you are able to limit yourself to create a context that allows you to minister Christ. Powerful revelation. Be transformed. Be transformed. Brothers and sisters, be transformed. Live where you are. Don't let your background, don't let your background cause you to think in a way and manner that you think everyone is from your village. And every time you see people behave in a way that is not consistent with your cultural context, you are tempted to insult them. No, sir. No, sir. There are things you cannot do as a northerner. You know, northerners, we are fairly conservative in our approach to life. There are things that you may not be able to do normally. Are we together now? But then you go to certain regions and you see them do it. There are places that, you know, I'm here, I'm, I'm somebody who is very organized and excellent and I, I, I like things in decency and order. But there are churches that you can go to that... Um, just a young guy from the choir comes to just tap your back as if you are his mate and gives you mic. Say, this, this one is nice. And you can try and say, ah, Mr. Go on Facebook. Are you crazy? Is there something wrong? I am Apostle Joshua Selman. No, sir. You have to have the flexibility to understand. That gentleman is not rude. He is only a victim of the context of his culture. That's why many Nigerians go abroad and look like thieves. They carry all kinds of siren and move around. And people say, who is this guy? He is a man of God. He just drops down in a hot afternoon with a suit and a collar and a big chain and stands. And while he's talking, the people cannot connect. Not because they are bad. It's strange to them. And then he begins to speak. Ah, I, I hope, I hope um, you are using generator. And they say, no, no, they don't take light here. And you embarrass yourself and you are spiritual. You are born again. But the limitation of... Now, listen. Some of you are laughing, but what I'm saying is very serious. The limitation of your context. There are homes you go to as a leader. They don't eat on the, 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 the chairs, the sofas there. They all go to the dining table. Are we together now? And one day God is going to open doors for you. And then you go there and they sit there and say, What are we doing there? Say, we're going to... say, say, for what? Me now, I hardly eat. How many times do I eat in a week? I'm always fasting. So what? So what? You must sustain a superior belief system, brothers and sisters. Hear me. Remember that I'm on a project to helping you becoming to, to become men and women of influence, not only spiritual people. You can persecute me now because you don't understand what you are yet becoming. Until you get to the future and you turn back, you say, Apostle, thank you, thank you. 
you're not going to carry yesterday into tomorrow and and want tomorrow to clap for you for bringing yesterday into it now seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses he says um let us lay aside every weight weights are not seen necessarily there are backlog of information and mindset belief systems that may not be appropriate for the context that god is taking you are we together superior belief systems there are churches and i say that with due honor please i don't mean to be sarcastic there are churches where women are not given any regard for any reason including the pastor's wife and the pastor's wife is comfortable with it because she grew within that context so she doesn't expect anything so doing what i just did to appreciate pastor petrock's wife a board can call a meeting and say no let's sit down something is going on in this church what the, they've never clapped for us and a woman not a, a woman so what if she's a pastor's wife context of culture so you will go somewhere and find out that they are introducing people you, the anointing is boiling in you for the mic to be given so that you preach and they are saying let's take our time and appreciate our mother in the lord she said this and you are saying what kind of carnal believers are this no you must have the accommodation because not a thing may be weakness to you but it's not weakness in another culture there is a culture where a father and his child cannot eat in the same plate it's impossible under no circumstance there is a culture where a father eating with his child is proof of love so you don't go somewhere and see a son eating with his father and even feeding the father and you say my god what taboo is this let's be careful preserve your belief systems but have the flexibility to give the world you live in a chance to know christ give people a chance give people a chance don't turn everyone to look like you give people a chance you must have that flexibility hold a superior mindset that allows you to be able to accommodate people's limitations or people's context sometimes it's not a limitation they are just different than you that's all are we together next week is my birthday i thank god for it i don't celebrate birthdays listen listen i never saw any of my loved ones celebrating birthdays in fact sometimes my parents used to forget their birthdays we just remind them and say ah it's your birthday they say oh glory be to god i came from a background where celebrating celebrating things at all and then because of my approach to life my standards to life on many fronts are very high so even when i've done something that is worthy of commendation i sometimes find myself rejecting any any drive for commendation to say look we need to aspire i'm, I'm a very visionary person once you do something is done glory be to god let's face forward what is the next thing are you seeing that some come from families where they come back with results 17th position and they cut chicken for you 17th 17th position and you eat chicken are we together now god calls you with that person to work together in ministry you take first and your father says why do you have one in punctuality as if he didn't see first position I'm not concerned about first. What is first? What is first? And someone is taking 17th and the father will say, I never went to school. Thank you. Caught chicken. Those two people working together, if they don't create a system of accommodating their limitation, there will be a lot of problems. And the Holy Spirit will be blamed for this. All of them are spiritual. Remember, this guy will say, it's the Holy Spirit that trained me that way. This one will say, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of celebration. With joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation. This one will say, one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. All of them, is still scripture they are bringing. But their belief systems are different. This guy tells himself, I want to buy myself a birthday gift of a watch. He said, what kind of thing is that? Do you waste money and celebrate yourself? Are you the only one doing this and that? And you see that those people can be anointed. And then they never go global. Imagine that I am such a leader. 
and I see you celebrating something, I say, Pastor Alpha, why are you celebrating your son? I say, well, we just glory. I say, what nonsense is that? There are souls perishing. There are lives. There are mission agencies. How can you spend 50000 on your child? Is he the only one that is coming? What kind of attitude is that? Now, imagine what I'm presenting. And it's as soon as I talk to him, I lift someone out of a wheelchair. So you may use the result of the wheelchair to think it's the Holy Spirit that taught me how to be that. And then this guy on the other hand keeps celebrating everything and finishes the church money. God gives them 100,000. The 100,000 goes on celebration. Are we together? Today is his day of being born again spiritually. Tomorrow is his, the first day he encountered a book that transformed his mind. Next week is the first day he met his wife. Not anniversary, the day he met his wife to celebrate. And all is the church that pays for it. And at the end of it, his life looks loud and carnal. And some members say something is wrong with our pastor. Are you seeing why members sit down and group themselves? according to their mindsets and create whatever trouble their mindsets can identify have you noticed that they don't sing local songs here this one says, have you noticed that it's just american we don't sing american songs all those things are reflections of limiting beliefs are we together i once gave someone ten thousand naira to buy something what he was going to buy there is two thousand of it I gave him the money intentionally because I wanted to prove to him that his mindset was not yet upgraded. I gave him the money. I said, buy it. I, he didn't even, even the 2001, he didn't buy it. Because he just felt, how can I carry this and do this? But it was a gift. I just gave him money to do it. May God deliver us from the limitations of an inferior thinking. Look at me. Let me explain something to you. Two people come. Happy come. Stand here. Chion, stand here. These are two different people. Listen. Coming from two different cultural contexts. Do you know that the danger of not having an upgraded mindset works twofold? Number one. This lady now, because of her... Just an example there, eh, my dear. An inferior mindset that she may be sustaining. Listen carefully. It can make this lady to fall into the hands of a bad man because intrinsically, because of her mindset, she has believed I am not good enough. So that low-level thinking of not knowing you are wonderfully and fearfully made can make her fall into the hands of a wicked man who will kick her like a football every day. Are we together now? Because she already sustains a mindset that says I am weak. It's a privilege. Dangerous. Then, I wish it's another lady. You go back. Another lady come. Stand here. This other lady, because of her awareness of how inferior her mind is, will become aggressive in her approach to life in a way to prove that she's not, she's not just a, a, a low-level lady. Are you seeing that two of them are behaving? It, the same mindset is informing different behaviors. This one now just settles for just anything in life. I don't mean it has to be married. Just anything in life. Someone can come and bully her and just collect her phone, collect anything, and you don't have a voice. This other person, you come, don't think I'm not, you know, I'm did that, I'm one of you, I'm carefully. All those ranting is as a result of an intrinsic, low-level esteem that she's having, and she uses aggression to fight it. Both people need deliverance. From insensitive aggression and from giving yourself cheap to life. There is a mindset. Is God speaking to us? I'm dwelling here because if you understand what I'm teaching you, my life changed. Listen, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, and I say it with all humility. I never went out of Zaria to be renewed and come back. So wherever you are, it's enough for the transformation to come. All this lie of saying, I must go to Dubai first and America. Exposure is important, don't get me wrong. But he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. You can start from where you are and say, look, we came from a family where when rain falls, the, we don't know what part is according to the 
the, the heaviness of the rain, that's where it determines which location rain will fall, um, the water will drop in. But from there, you can start thinking, in the name of Jesus, I will be a blessing to nations. In the name of Jesus, I'm upgrading my mind by the Spirit. I have Gary, that's all I have in my wardrobe. But in the name of Jesus, I will feed nations. While you are doing that, we live in a very sarcastic world that will want to intimidate you. You don't have to revolt in weakness, but at the same time, you maintain a healthy perspective constructed by the word of God. That's why it's important to know the word of God. You need to know what God has said about you so that you will not listen to what God did not say about you. When you know what God has said about you, it doesn't matter what another person says. Is God speaking to us? Which of these two are you? As a result of limiting beliefs. There are many of us who have the call of God upon our lives. But as you are like this, you would dare not say yes to the call. Because you've never seen anyone rise in your background. The, the, most, the most educated person has SSC in your family. SSC, that's all. And so God says, I'm going to use you. And you are like, ah, it's not for people like us. Oh God, I will gladly be an usher in whatever church it is. And God says, no. According to my predetermined counsel, you are the one I will use. Is God speaking to us? Brothers and sisters, I bring you a word. As limited as you look, you are still the one God is talking about. When God talks about an army that will rise listen very carefully when god talks about men and women who will rise and shake the gates of hell he's not talking about someone somewhere i have always maintained the resolve that anything good i see in the bible i say god is talking about me listen if i didn't have a superior mindset i wouldn't be in ministry now because our world is full of sarcastic people who will bully you psychologically they will make it look like what is the basis of doing ministry what is this what is that where will you get money from to hell with the devil i came to preach to someone that in the name that is above all names whatever god has said you will become you must become adonai lamb of god you are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life. Adonai, Adonai. In my life, replace the old ideas. Let your kingdom come. Ah, let your kingdom reign. Let your kingdom reign. Listen, if you will allow God change your belief system. I promise you, there is no devil in hell that can stop where you will go to. They will just keep criticizing while you are rising. Like an infant of fire. No devil will stop you. Listen, let me teach you something. Be inspired, be challenged, but never intimidated. Don't let any man born of a woman stand and bully you emotionally. Whether because of finances, or because of looks, or because of education, the devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, every voice you have been listening to that has made you to reject the purposes of God in your life, I silence that voice over your life now. Sit down. Ejimi is here. Ask him when the Lord began to speak to us about what the messages will do around the world. I didn't sit down saying from Zaria to the whole world, Haba, is it people like us? When there are great men like the Oyedekos and the Papa Ie Adeboes, I honor them, I respect them, but not to the detriment of my revelation of God. Come on now, please. 
Don't love Joshua Selman so much that you look down on yourself and your destiny and your anointing. Love him and give him the honor that is due, but say, I'm coming too. There is an anointing upon my life. No, sir. And sometimes we pastors love it. We love it when people demean themselves to prove that we are great. I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. There is no good leader that will not want to see his people rise up and even be greater than him. We started that message and I announced to them, I said, the Lord said we should not sell any one of the tapes. That I told him, I said, I saw the message on the wings of the spirit going everywhere. Ejimi was the one who designed the logo of ENI. Ask him, he would tell you. Ejimi almost cried designing that logo. I couldn't design, but I told him, you must design what I saw in the spirit. He would do this. I said, no, sir. This is not what I saw. Adjust this. He was so tired. I said, this logo you are seeing is going to the nations. Design it well. Ask him. I saw the vision. I said, your hand, you must find a way of seeing what God showed me. Ah, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Is it because I came from a background where we don't have light? Is it because our house was made with mud house? My mind is not mud mind. No, sir. No, sir. Listen, I have proven with my life that you can break any barrier. It's true. God has used me as a statement to prove to you that this race, ba, my brother, if God holds your hand, let the people keep talking. You just move. You just move and watch with shock and wonder. Who has lied to you that just because you read this or you have this, you cannot be great in life? Who told you you cannot contend for a position of influence? You go to bed in the night and see a massive crusade. You get up and say, no, no, it's Reinhard Bonke's crusade. God says, no, no, it's you. And while he's talking, he says, ah, God, when, when so, so, so man of God has not even done that. What is your business with the man of God's call? Ah, even so come, 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 Lord Jesus. That which you have revealed, let it come. When Koinonia was about to start... I was in a retreat and I saw the visions and I was sharing it with them. One of the things that I love, you hear me talk a lot about Ejimi. One of the things that I love about him is because he's always a victim of my revelations. When God shows me like this, I call him and just keep pounding it on him. And sometimes I honestly see that he, he wants to be honorable to say, Apostle, look, I don't doubt you. I'm a man of faith too, but ah, will it happen? You see why it's dangerous to be close to me? Because when you are listening, you can't say it won't happen. Because automatically you have become an antichrist. And any antichrist in my life must go. You are here right now. You trekked from where you were here. But God has given you the name of your foundation. And God already told you that you will be spending as much as a billion dollars per year and you are saying, God, please, uh, I, I, I give that vision to Ejimi. And God says, why do you belittle me? Brothers and sisters, I bring before you an arrogant society that does not know the power of God. They don't know that God is the lifter of men. So when God shows you things, you go to them for accreditation. And they use their limitation to say, God has never moved this way. No. No. There is no way I cannot go to. No. There is, there is, there is, there is, and, and I'm not just saying this just because God has brought some measure of results. It's been like that. Those who know me from day one, it's not boasting. I'm not talking of vain arrogance. That's not what I'm talking about. A settled confidence, but I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded, persuaded that one day I will not beg for bread, that one day the nations will gather together. Right from those days when we were sitting on the ground, I used to describe the international headquarters of this ministry that I saw about 47 flags of nations. I used to say it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say it and hear sarcastic people speak. You, God said you marry a pastor. 
God doesn't have any woman to give his son and he will come and give a village girl like you. And God says, that's right. It's village as I want. So that the excellency of power may be of God and not of men. Can you pray in tongues just for one minute and say, Lord, I, I reject any belief system that is not consistent with your ways and your word. Yes, you are able to take me high. Yes, you are able to lead me to the place of destiny. Praise. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Abada katola bakata sene makata ya labas. Great things have I spoken of you, O Zion. Lord, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen, brothers and sisters, when you find your destiny through the word, then the first limitation, listen, sit down, sit down, sit down. The first thing to change in your life is not your shoe. The first thing to change in your life is not your, uh, what they call this thing, your hair. The first thing to change in your life is not your toothpaste. The first thing to change in your life is not your room. The first thing to change, second only to your encounter with the Spirit, is your mind. Remain with the dirty clothes and let your mind keep changing. And see whether your mind will not buy new clothes and change that body. We, we spend time trying to live a fake life, buying every other thing and starving our minds. There are pastors who start ministry. They know nothing about church growth, no anointing, no nothing. They buy the most expensive suits, expensive watches, expensive chair and room, and they preach to themselves. Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. That's a song you will be singing when your mind causes your life to change. Let me tell you this, quit this pressure of living a fake life. If all you have is Gary, take it with honor. Whoever has gone ahead of you, those who go ahead of you have a funny way of turning back to make you look like, oh, just to let you know I just ate turkey. God bless you with your turkey. My turkey is here. I am patient enough to let it come. The creative power, the superior power, there is no demon that can stand a transformed mind. I tell you this, your mind is a gate. Let it grow right where you are. You are a man of God, but no one is placing a demand yet on your grace and ministry. Don't start moving around with cards and getting angry and say, Jimmy, is it that you didn't know God called me? Can't you invite me for the prayer meeting? It's a sign you are not growing. Remain in the wilderness and continue to build your mind. When your season of appearing comes, brothers and sisters, you will sit down and wonder and say, you mean life can be this cheap? 
I'm not in a hurry to go where God has not taken me to. I would rather get there here and be patient. But when I do get there, you will know he took me there. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Contending for kingdom relevance, the power of transformation. You are global in your approach. No one intimidating you, only inspiring you. Don't gather people in your life to intimidate you. Gather them to inspire you, to provoke you to godliness. If my life is intimidating you, I'm destructive to your destiny. I was almost saying verse 3. Number 3. Jesus. Hmm. We will all be great. And the best part is that we will all know ourselves. It's true. What you are receiving is like an infection. You will never be able to undo it. It's true. It's like you gave somebody chloroquine. Huh? And then you tell the person to remove out the chloroquine again. How are you going to do it? It's already there. Just be patient. If it's an itch, enjoy it for, I don't know how long it happens, three to five days. That's how your destiny is. What is entering your spirit and your mind cannot be brought out again. There's only entrance. There's no exit. Once it gets there, by yourself, you will turn and see your life changing. And you say, God, what is, what is going on? Then you will sing this song by yourself. Not as a special number, but a testimony. And they glorified God in me. Number three, let's hurry up. The third key in contending for kingdom relevance is that you must be extremely valuable write it down key number three extreme value those who will be representatives of the purposes of god for their generation please write it down are not only men and women who will know god they are not only men and women who will be transformed your transformation affects you alone. It is your value that affects others. Your value is proof that you have been transformed. Your transformation blesses you alone. It is your value that now extends to others. And that's when your life begins to be rewarded. When you are valuable. The law of value is a powerful key. That your similarities decide your comfort. It is your difference that decides your rewards. When you are similar with people in many respects, you are able to stay together. It creates a system of accommodation. But for your rewards in life, it is your value and your difference. Whether it is in ministry, whether it is in business, in career, those who are extremely valuable, valuable beyond ignoring, they are the ones who will command influence into this world. Is God speaking to us? Extreme value. Extreme value. Years ago, my dear mentor, blessed memory, Dr. Miles Munro, while he was mentoring me in the area of purpose and value, I didn't, it didn't make sense to me that when you are so valuable, Gentiles will come to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising. But today I see it. The proof that you are valuable is that men are seeking for you. If no one is looking for you, it's a message from your future to your today. Upgrade. Be valuable. All men seek for you. Not just to the degree to which you love God, but to the degree to which you have represented value to them. And they will not seek for you empty-handed. 
They will seek for you with their gold and their silver. They will seek for you with gold. They will seek for you with frankincense. They will seek for you with man. They will never come empty handed. Your generation is too scarce of value to ignore you when you are valuable. The greed of men cannot stop your reward system when you are valuable. Extremely valuable. When I talk to people and I tell them what can you do, and they say I can do this, my next question is how good are you? I say no, but God is helping us. That is a religious talk by lazy people. Are we together? It's an excuse. It's proof that they have pegged themselves at a level and would not want to rise higher. Say, no problem, we are and there. No. Oh, you are you are you are a music minister. How good are you? Well, I'm I'm trying. Trying like what? We live in a world where value is so scarce. When it is truly seen, it is sought immediately. Immediately. I was blessed when my dear brother, the pastor there, sent me a text. You can imagine that he just came here and a woman calls him to give him all of that. Imagine that someone tells him now, that man, this man of God is a herbalist. He says he's a good herbalist. I, I want that kind of herbalist. <laughs> hallelujah the reason why the excuses they bring in your life is valued is because your value is lower than the excuses when your value rises higher than any excuse that can be brought against you people will ignore even what is obvious to seek you you go to buy suya and you stand and the smoke is all over your face and your clothes but the value is too important for the smoke to deter you. Are we together? You stand there salivating patiently. Two people in front of you and you are not complaining. Your dignity notwithstanding. If you can make the meat go home. It's as simple as that. And the person making it is not in a hurry. He's not in a hurry. If you have a, I didn't force you, you can. And you stand, you complain but remain. You insult but remain. This will be my last time but remain. It's your last time until after three days when you are hungry again and you go back. When your enemies join to seek you, you are valuable. They search around for alternatives and don't find and say, look, we have to just make do with what is available. When God wants to honor a man, he puts something in your life that is not available anywhere. At least not in that fashion. A few years ago, a man was praying for me, a great man of God. I went to see him and saw into his life. And then he looked at me and just laid his hands on, on my head and said, Oh God, create a problem around his region that only him can solve. I said, what kind of prayer is this? Just slapped my head and said, <laughs> oh, If that prayer is answered for your business, you will be afraid. That's the kind of answer to prayers that make people angry they say this mama must be using a charm one of our mothers here gave a testimony recently when i when she she was telling me about the testimony i will not mention the details but it's a breakthrough that god gave her that it, these are the kind of breakthroughs that if god gives you you have reached december <laughs> even though you are in april you have reached december you can start laughing see it thou a man any man See thou a man diligent in his business. There is a promise that he shall stand before the great. He shall not stand before mean men. Let me tell you why you are standing before mean men. It's not because there are powers fighting you alone. There may be an element of that. But let me tell you, your, your mediocrity has authorized a life of average to remain with you. Whether as a man of God, I've challenged you, I've challenged all the people here, the leaders here, and you're a man of God here, I'm challenging you. Don't just stop at the level of sharing and say, oh, the power of God is moving, it's moving. Then one lady now starts rolling around. That, 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 you won't go far that way. You get to a church where it's the ushers that are producing that kind of result. They can't invite you. You must stay with him. Let something from heaven that cannot be faked come upon your life. 
Remember my teaching on true riches. That, that you have true riches. If all you have in life is what money can buy, you are cheap. If all you have in life is what money can buy, you are cheap. That means you don't have anything to tell Bill Gates. That means you don't have anything to tell Dangote. If God plans a meeting for me with Dangote now, what do I have to tell him? God will give you breakthrough. He will look at you and say, what are you saying? There are churches I have gone to, brothers and sisters, with all humility, you will know that the least person in that church is still rich. There are churches I've gone to. You say, may God bless you. They just say, amen. Because they don't, they, 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 God, they, that prayer has been answered. They are looking for something more. What will a king be looking for? What was Sheba looking for when she came to Solomon? Was it what money could buy? Did she not come with gifts that money could buy? I, I pray for you. May God put something on your life that money cannot buy. I say it again. In the name that is above all names. May my God put something upon your life. That will make you extremely valuable. Please sit down. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Let me show you how people defy being ignored. My house is full of wrappers for my mother. My dear wonderful mother, partaker of value. Are we together now? These guys, a year ago, were student doctors. Nobody was paying them. But because they had been valuable intellectually now, they received salaries. Someone has been complaining that they fired him from railway corporation since 1996. Till tomorrow, he didn't reinvent himself to be relevant to a world. It's not enough to be a graduate. You must be available and you must be usable. Many graduates are not valuable. They are just educated. To be educated and to be valuable are two different things. To be valuable means to be needed and useful. To be valuable means to not be easily replaceable. I can cook. Like who? I like my food. Are you the only one who will eat it? I can preach. I'm a man of God. I can sing. You mean you can sing? Yes. God gave me songs. Okay, sing something. Let's hear. And you stand and you are twisting your tongue around and the, the preacher sings more than you. Why should he invite you when you can sing too? I listened to a particular gospel artist. Um, I think it was yesterday night while I was about to sleep. And I was so blessed. I said, Kai... This man is anointed. I truly see why people seek for him. Value. You see, if I were not anointed the way God anointed me, you will think I'm teaching you value simply as a way of excusing the need for anointing. Because that's what many spiritual people, those, especially those of us who are called into the ministry of signs and wonders, we place very little value on these matters. We think they are lesser matters. And so we are the ones who keep rising alone. Whereas those who are... You see, I, I, I fear God and I have conscience. If I'm the only one rising in this ministry, I am failing. No. Your rising is proof that I am rising. If someone gives me 10 naira today for being valuable, I turn and look at you. Have they given you one naira? If they've given you one error, we rejoice together. That the sower and the reaper rejoice together. But where I'm collecting 200 naira, and you are there saying to apostle, this thing you are teaching, it means something is wrong. Either with me or with my doctrine. Are we together? The worship team, for years, I didn't allow them to go and have external ministrations. Many of them didn't understand that. 
they would say, ah, we have been invited somewhere. I say, you are not going anywhere. Not with what you did on Friday. You are not going anywhere. You do that kind of thing, it's only in Zaria they will invite you. You will never go outside Zaria. Stay. But today, by the grace of God, God has walked on them. And these gentlemen are singing songs that people are singing, not only in other parts of this nation, but even outside this nation. It's called value. When you decide to be small in life, you are going to be angry. Because most of the people who will rise will be people you know. You will be very, very angry. There are many angry people. There are people who used to know me years ago. Just like my dear brother would say. You know, most people, I, I returned back from Kano yesterday. Very tired, very this, but most people will say, ah, Apostle, I call, is it that you don't know me? I know you, but... The way life has presented itself is, is such that you have to just be patient with me. Apostle, before, in 2000, one dial and you will pick. Abba. For 18 years, I wasn't doing anything with my life. Value. When you see me settling down to study, you will not know that I'm a man of God. I, Daniel, understood by books. Sit down and study. Sit down and learn. The average sermon as a man of God takes serious time. I preach an average of two to three sermons every week. You think it just drops from heaven just because I told God gave me the topic. He didn't teach me what to say. What gives you topic and gives you wisdom? You go and sit down and research and learn. Are you valuable enough? Listen very carefully. I want you to ask yourself that question honestly. I'm not saying are you valuable. You are. But are you valuable enough to bring to your life the kind of influence? Are you valuable enough worth following? Can someone follow you and know that I'm following something superior? The guy who sang this song, E. Daniels, He's a blind guy. I didn't even know he was blind. Went to minister somewhere with him. Blind gentleman. And my goodness, when this guy climbed the stage and held on to his guitar, with my two eyes, I still cannot play what that guy was playing. Songs from the Spirit, backed up by extreme skill. This guy was playing and playing, and I said, what is this? We are on our way to Kano. Well, just listening to songs. And when it got to his song, I just kept quiet. The whole car was just filled with the presence of God. Value. But someone whose eyes, are, whose eyes can see and will not do anything and is waiting for God to do this. Let me tell you this. If you are a parent here, let me advise you. Especially for your, male, your, your sons. Start training them to be responsible early in life. Sometimes this dashing, excessive dashing of money and things is why many young men are lazy. Pain is a language that can teach people. Money is not the only thing you should give people. You can give them advice. They don't like advice. They don't like counseling. But they like something they can hold and exchange immediately. Be valuable. I made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, every area that God would have me function in, I will be extremely valuable. Average is terrible because you are neither here nor there. I like you to enter a covenant with yourself that whatever I know there is grace for me to do, I will be, I will be the best and I will not rest. If you tell me you want to go into the academia, and you just stop at MSc or BSc, I know that you are not going to have a voice. There are people here who are lecturers in the academia. Pastor Alpha, I think he just, he just did his, his externals and all of that. And a number of people here. You shouldn't stop till you become a professor. I'm not called into the academia. So you find the professor version of what God called you to do. That's the thing I like with Hausa people. Even if you tell them to peel orange, they become so professional when they stand and they are peeling that orange. They peel it in a way and manner that wants you to go back to them. Mastery. Rewards are for masters. 
entry level in life is how you suffer. You never make any relevance being at entry level. A time will come where everybody around you is great. May the great call you great. When the great call you great, you are great indeed. But you must walk. Write it on your note. I receive grace to be diligent. The anointing does not cover for the place of hard work. See, I, I, I'm sorry if I'm using myself and it looks like pride. Forgive me. But if at this level I'm still working hard and you are sleeping, you are joking. Let me inspire you. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm being careful to use myself so you don't think that if at this level I've not gone to bed and at the level you are, you are sleeping, it's a sign that you are far from influence. I have food to eat. I can eat whatever I want to eat. But then you are still awake. Shakatos kabarakatosh. New dimensions, oh God. New levels, oh God. I come back from a meeting. I came back from police academy. They gave me this their police, uh, this uh, police thing. Two of it. That thing that they wear. I told them I'm an affiliate policeman. You can have that and hang it and start sleeping and remain there until the world moves ahead of you. And then you wonder, why don't people listen to me again? They say, because you stop being relevant. You see, let me tell you this. As we are sitting now, if someone starts shouting under the anointing, you won't be impressed because you have already seen that standard in me. There will be an appetite in you for what more. When that happens in another meeting, you'll be surprised. But what will bless, it will only bless visitors. But you who is in Koinonia here now, once someone starts shouting under the anointing and moving around, you don't turn and say, hey, what is happening? No. When you have hit a standard, that standard, people get used to it and that's all. You must strive for something more. That's why when they say holy, 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 when they lift their face, they see another dimension of God. Who was, who is, and who is to come. If you are who was, you are in trouble. If you are who is, you will soon be in trouble. There must also be something to come. That was, is, and is to come dimension must work in your life. If I only know he who was. Businessman who was. Apostle who was. What are you doing now? Relative to what God is doing. And what are you doing tomorrow? Will our little children need you? Or will you be so irrelevant? They say, I don't know why you people like this man. I'm, I'm telling you things that many of you will not hear easily. Value. I will be wicked to not teach you this. This is what I'm doing in my own life. I have reaped the fruits of value in a way that if God never blesses me again, I am grateful. Sometimes I find myself in circles and places and I just nod my head. I said, ah, who dash monkey banana? If not because of the blessings of value. You will be so valuable when you get to the corridors of power, you will stand and wonder and say, Lord, is this what you can do? They will come and find you with a big bed, but you are crying on the ground. And they say, sir, you should be lying down on this bed. He say, no, don't worry. I'm lying down on the ground because what God has done for me. Too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. What's the song again? Love me too much, oh. Listen, this is what many of us are going to use to break the barriers that are in our families. Some of you, your family has not risen anywhere and all of you are educated. You see, let me tell you this. I want to tell you something that is very uncomfortable. There is no such thing as being educated in our world today. You are either learning or you are out. Educated in terms of formal education is wonderful. But educated to mean I have gathered enough information to make the world hear me is pride. You are joking. 
if a professor is still reading writing articles doing researches and you just come out a, a degree right now is almost like I, I told you about a place that i went to that the receptionist had two MSCs abroad receptionist gone are the days where you brag and say look i have degree in a i have another degree in b and someone will come who is 18 years and say i have four degrees and you stand there feeling foolish but there is something you can have in both your mind and your spirit that can give you a place that can take away shame brothers and sisters shame and reproach can leave a man when you stay with god that he put something upon your life financial shame can leave your life sociological shame can leave your life you never go somewhere and they look at you and say you are not fine let your mind add to your beauty let your value add to your beauty oh you are too short you are too tall you are too fat you are too slim value can make you fit for everything a door that will not open because they will say you are too tall value will reduce you to enter a door that will say you are too short value will make you taller to enter you have taken all my shame you have taken all my sorrows you have taken all the sorrows you have taken all the pain you have made them yours highest praise to the king you have taken all my tears you have taken all lamentation you have taken all the sorrows you have taken all the weakness you have made them yours highest praise to the king listen god wants to make this song someone's reality that you turn and say lord look at how you took away shame from my family lord look at the embarrassment i'm a man of god i am called into ministry but it's like i am not called but look what you have put upon my life today i have become beulah and hefzibah the desire of nations look what you have done with my family my mother that was nothing my brother that was nothing they kept saying can anything good come out of my family but lord look what you have done you have taken me from a donkey Fanny. Value. Sit down. Let me give you four four things that you should cry for. There are seven of them, but I'll give you four. <laughs> they are called the true riches of the kingdom. I want to teach you what buys money, what buys influence. Influence is a product. It is bought with something. I want to show you the capital that buys influence. Ready? Number one, the capital of light. Light is capital. Illumination, revelation. We use light to buy money as a product. We use light to buy influence. For it is the light that shineth in darkness. Light is capital. Whoever has light can buy anything money can buy. Are we blessed? Number two. The second capital that you need that can buy other things. Listen very carefully and never forget this. I'm only going to give you four. The second, that light, understanding. Write it down. Understanding. The comprehension of the systems of the kingdom. When you have this, you have something money cannot buy. Are we together? Are you ready for the third capital? The third capital is the ability to hear God. If anybody ever told you the ability to hear God is not value, he lied to you. Hmm. 
and thou shalt hear a voice from behind thee saying 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 this is the way people prosper in life because the lord is their shepherd and if the sheep cannot hear the voice you will go where the lion is the forest is a place that is open for every other animal not just the sheep is the shepherd that guides them in the path of righteousness otherwise the sheep can veer off a land that you go and meet a prey that eats you up the ability to hear the voice of god correctly is value let me give you the fourth one i have a series that's why i'm not giving you all of it there's a series two riches before the end of the year we will teach it so that you will stop chasing money you will chase what buys money i taught you last week please come sir give me this water come here jimmy look at this if this is i have let, let me bring out some money this is a product called a bottle of water is that true i don't know how much they sell this but you just hold it now if a jimmy wants this he needs to have something that can buy it so if i give you money you have bought this product but when you want this what buys it if this is the product you want what buys it a job <laughs> business now true riches is the name of the money that buys money are we together it's true whoever possesses light must possess this whoever possesses understand he said with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness business or job are simply physical platforms to give the true riches you possess an avenue for expression and a coordinated system for being rewarded that's all they are so if all you have and all you are looking for is this you are going to be a slave to your destiny forever that's what is happening to many of us now anywhere money is is where you are running to the money itself is running somewhere find out where it is running to don't just follow money follow where money is going this money that is running away is going somewhere where is it going it's going to those who possess true riches either gotten by occultic powers or gotten from the secret place when god wants to prosper men he doesn't give them money it's an insult if god gives you money why will he god give you money god gives you true riches and compels a territory to identify with that and you will have this and not know what to do with it and find out that this is the least of your concerns he will give you influence that will make people think you have a charm why do people want to hear you it's because there is something in your life that cannot be bought in the supermarket value are we together now thank you you drop it in the offering basket or something praise the lord very very important the last of them is the anointing let me tell you this the highest manifestation of true riches on earth is the anointing the highest higher than all others that have called the anointing is the highest spiritual commodity available for purchase and use on the earth in heaven the anointing is not the highest because we see in the throne room all the people in the throne room we don't hear the mention of anointing so there are things higher than the anointing in heaven but on earth the anointing the valued cherub and the rest all of them they don't live in the throne room they visit the presence of god with the anointing that means there is something those 24 elders have there is something those four living creatures have that is not anointing we will find out but for now as given to us it says the yoke it shall come to pass in that day listen carefully that the yoke shall be taken from off your shoulder and the burden from your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing when god wants to use men on earth he gives them the highest value the anointing he can give them in the secret place and they come out in the open and life starts following them where did this shepherd boy david smelling sheep but with the anointing 
don't ever ignore a man who has the anointing he has true riches it may not look like it that's why those who seek god people will say don't see god don't see god balance what they mean balance is leave god don't leave god oh you leave the anointing you suffer in this life takes the anointing the rich are oppressed too the poor are oppressed money cannot buy that money can buy the salvation of your soul money can buy panadol but it cannot cast away demons so whoever has that ability ah, you have taken all my shame you have taken all my soul you have taken all my pain you have taken all limitations have made them yours. High praise to the King. Koinonia, listen to me. Do you know what you are receiving every week you come and sit down here? You are not just receiving information. There is a transfer like you do internet transfer. Something is coming on your life. You see, as you keep receiving that, a time will come, you will come out. My brother, my sister, regardless of all other limitations in your life you will stand in shock when you see those waiting to see you and you look at their chariots full of gold and silver and they say let it be a privilege someone's prayer point of 10 years your your savings plan of 20 years the anointing brings it in one day let me tell you something that you don't hear me say all the time and i say this with due respect and honor over 70 percent of those who partner with this ministry are not here i don't know them are we together our ministry is full of a lot of young people and god is helping you all you are rising but many of us are not yet there it will be a terrible thing to begin to yoke you with the bills that run this ministry when the finance department brings me the bills and I look at it, sometimes I'm surprised. I'm like, what? This is what one department is spending per month? But by the finger of God, when he gives you two riches, it's like a charm. Look at Elisha. Now, man, what are you doing in front of my house? How about Elisha, come out, respect me. He said, who is leprous? Me or you? Go and bath seven times. He said, respect it while he's talking that jagger. You can choose to remain. Ah, when you have two riches, you command life at your terms. You see, when we talk like this, many young people think it's because we are lucky to have been anointed. No, sir. The anointing is a stream of income. Whoever told you the anointing is not important. Whoever mocked and scorned at the anointing. The Bible said, those, those that do wickedly against the covenant, God will corrupt with flatteries. They look at these ordinances and say, don't worry, it doesn't matter. When people talk, look at their results first before you believe them. Don't be a victim of someone's learning process. Then when he corrects himself, you have swallowed up his error and there is no room to correct yourself. Are we together? Yes, Value. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, hey. Yahweh. I've given you one, you must know God. Two, be transformed. Three, be extremely valuable. Number four, you must master relationships. 
you want to contend for kingdom influence, you must master relationships. Not just have relationships. You must master relationships. Everything in the kingdom reproduces on the basis of relationships. If you do not understand relationships, you are not going far in life. What are relationships? I've taught you. They are advantageous connections. Listen very carefully. We call a human being an organism because there is a relationship between every organ, every system, every tissue, every cell. They are connected in some way and they form an organism. Split all of them and keep them around. The bones in the valley of Ezekiel were not an army, although the bones were there. They had to be connected to be an army. Are we together now? If you do not know how to master relationships, then you will never rise to certain levels of influence in business, in ministry, etc. Relationships. Write, please. Let me give you a few things to write and then we'll pray. Is God challenging us tonight? Please be challenged, though. Please be challenged. Relationships are advantageous connections. Write it down, please. I've taught you that the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships. Just like the anointing, relationships are a stream of income. Relationships can bless you. When you are connected to the right people, you can live off that relationship. Anything money can buy, relationship can pay for it too. But there is a price. There is a price for mastering relationships. Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. The Bible says, can two walk together? Two anything, two people, two, even anything. Can, can your systems walk together except they agree? If the mouth is opening and the legs say, I must move too, there will be trouble somewhere. There is a system of coordination in your body. Right? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Many of us have not mastered valuable relationships. And that's why we never rise. We are born again. We are anointed. But the system for multiplication in our life is not there. So we are just seeds. We never become a harvest. Because we are not connected. It is the relationship between a man and his wife that produces another being. There must be a relationship between your seed and something else to produce more of what you want. You alone carrying the seed of greatness within you cannot make a forest of greatness. You will need another entity that the seed will cause another multiplication. Plants know this. Animals know this. But we don't know this with respect to a life of great influence. Are we together? Relationships. You saw the wife of my dear friend, Pastor Petrock, when she came in here, I took out time to appreciate her. Do you know why? Because she's my friend and I love him. Because she's my friend and I love her. They're wonderful people. They host me so well every time I have the opportunity to be in Mina and they give me their very best. They have honored me so much and I reciprocate it. It's a relationship that we maintain. Are you seeing that now? The, the pastor said when he came here, he saw the workers walking. Do you know because there is a relationship? I love the workers. I don't use them. I love them and they know I love them. The person who should bless and lift your life, do you have a relationship with him? It's amazing how people just want the anointing to come to them. Who do you think you are? No. Without venison between Jacob and Isaac, there is no blessing. Venison there doesn't mean food or money. Venison is a system of honor. He said, I want to bless you, but as you are now, I'm going to waste my time. Do something. Create a system of honor between me and you. And you are going to receive something on me. Relationships are powerful. You must learn to master relationships. Relationships don't maintain themselves. I've told you this here, but write it again. All the parties involved must be committed to maintaining themselves. 
Last year during my birthday, my pastor friend in Lagos, Pastor Shola, they brought a big cake and kept it in front of a big church as if they are idolizing a man. And we're singing happy birthday. I'm here in Zaria and a church in Lagos keeps a big cake to celebrate a man. I don't know how many of my friends have called me now and said, Apostle, come to our region and want to celebrate your birthday. I said, no, 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 please. I, I have phobia for celebrations and all of this. I'm just, just pray for me and eat the cake on my behalf. Relationship. I can tell you why there's nobody to help you when there's trouble. Because you don't care about anybody. You care about yourself through people. Listen carefully. You care about who? Yourself. Only that you route it through people. When you love people genuinely and you care for them and you show them love, you will see how they will kill themselves to defend what you represent. Are we together? Many anointed people are lonely. There's nobody to speak for them and say, there is a man of God we know here. The hand of God is upon his life. He can be invited here. Who are you connected to? Enough to help you rise. Is God speaking to us? A tree only grows because it's connected to the earth. Fruits only remain because they are connected to the branches that are connected to the vine, that is connected to the root, that is connected to the ground. When your mouth throws food, if other systems don't cooperate with it, you can die. I'm not a doctor, but I'm smart enough to know. Are we together? Look at how the systems play. They patiently wait for the mouth to receive the food. Then other systems start playing. Life is systemic. Never forget this. A human being with no respiratory system is almost not a human being. He's dead. There are people that can have one part of their body working and another part not. You see the limitation in their lives. Are we together? Do you have valuable relationships today? If someone decides to come and oppress you, is there a voice that can speak for you? If the devil tries to oppress you, is there somebody you are connected to that you can say in the name of Jesus, this will rise for me? I saw one of our dear babies. I can't wait for the service to finish. Let me give her a very big hug. I was in school of ministry when they brought her. She was so sick. When I saw that dear lady, I saw her adorable baby. The way I hugged her, I prayed for her. I said, Pastor Alpha, please immediately take her to the hospital. They took her there, treated her and all of that. What if I did not know Pastor Alpha? What if we did not know someone in the hospital? What if that girl just dies like that? Then we say, how can I lay Ashiria? No relationships. Is there somebody you know that you can actually go to now and he will give you money? Not borrowing. Not borrowing. Not everybody is greedy. Sir, I stand before you. I'm trusting God. This is it. My child's school fees. And he says, take because we are related. Look, if you don't have these help structures in your life, you are in trouble. You are in big trouble. Are we together? And if your friends are only Christians, you are still in trouble. Because you live in a heterogeneous world where many Christians, their hands cannot reach the table of influence that you need help from. So you will need to be especially good to those of the household of faith, but be good to all men. The people that transport you here, I don't know how many Christians there are from them. We have never had an occasion to fight. The Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers, they are Muslims, but we love them. We always do things for them. That's why they can come sometimes, may, they may be here by now, and wait for over 30 minutes, one hour, and they pick you. Relationships. Are we together? Who you are related. Let me tell you this. Who hates you doesn't matter, but who likes you matters. Who hates you doesn't matter, but who likes you in this kingdom? I told you that there are men who you cannot cast out of your life. If God wants to bless you, he will make them like you. But for as long as they don't give you access, you are not going anywhere. They are gates. When God wants to prosper you and the work of your hand, you don't fight them. God touches their hearts to like you. 
when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. If you want to enter Aso Rock now, whether you like Buhari or not, you are, you are not going to enter out Aso Rock without him. So if God wants you to enter Aso Rock, he will make him like you. Then you enter Aso Rock. Not everything is bindable. That's why there is favor. So that the ones that can't be bound, favor will maneuver away in throne. You must write, if you treat everybody the same in your life, the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life. Everybody cannot be the same in your life. Some of us have this socialist view about life. Everybody is the same. The one who pays your school fees and the one who greets you in the morning, they are the same. The one who prays for you, the one who fasts for you, they are all... In your world, there is no stratification based on value and honor. No. Jesus had three. He had 12. He had 72. He had 5,000. He had all kinds. Don't give everybody equal access to your life. Let them qualify for access through their participation over your success. I love everybody, but not everybody is at the level, uh, same level of relationship. Is God helping us and are we learning? Please say amen. amen. Some of you are praying right now. The answer to your prayers is in a relationship. Oh God, when will this rent go? And God is saying, you better take the law of honor seriously. The law of honor can pay you a rent for 10 years. The law of honor can buy you a car. The law of honor can bring an anointing to your life. You don't insult a man and when you see him, you just say, Sean, sir, sorry, I was just thinking before you pass, you just quickly impart my head. It doesn't work like that, sir. Your sarcasm is already a witness before the justice system of God as to why that anointing should not flow to your life. It doesn't matter whether the man of God lays hands on you or not. There are men of God in my life I will never be offended in. If I hear today that they said Joshua Selman is a devil, Joshua Selman is this, I will still love them and honor them. Your connection is how you rise. Learn this. Learn this. I told you Bishop Oedipo's advice that he gave the young minister when he was starting. Pastor Corede, he said, never fight alone. Many of us are fighting alone. No. There must be an alliance in your life for you to prosper. That's why we have something called United Nations. That's why we have something called African Union. Is that true? It's a coalition of people. What relationship is in your life today? I shared this with us already, but let me just run through it. How to maintain relationships. Let me give you seven points very quickly in succession. Number one, avoid competitive jealousy. Sorry I'm rushing. There's already a series on mastering relationships. Get it. You can never relate with people when there is competitive jealousy. You bought this, I must buy too. You have this, I must have too. You are anointed. No, 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 no. You don't do that. Number two, avoid gossip, backbiting, and ill speaking. You never connect with people when you walk in gossip, backbiting and ill speaking. Never practice that. Number three, very quickly, avoid offense. Offense is the ease with which you get irritated. Offense is the ease with which you get angry. Offense is the ease with which you get resentful. Settle it once and for all that everyone you relate with is not perfect. Just like you. So settle it once and for all that imperfection will be featured once and again in your relationship. But let that be too small a reason to cause you to lose the precious things that are associated with relationships. Are we together? Avoid offense. Four, practice forgiveness. It's not enough to not be offended. You must practice forgiveness. Any kind of relationship thrives on forgiveness. There are times you just need to let go and ignore what they thought, what they said, what they did. Just, just let it go. Are we together? Number five, be tolerant. Have a high degree of tolerance. 
You want to maintain relationships, you must be tolerant. Let me tell you the difference between forgiveness and tolerance. Forgiveness may be an error or a mistake or a weakness that you hope will not happen again. Tolerance is a weakness enshrined in that person that is, is bound to happen again. You know, when people are going to get married, a guy loves a lady and he offends her and she says, promise me you will never do it. And the foolish guy has the effrontery to promise that he will never do it again. Whoever told you you will never do it again? You shouted at me. I don't like it. I'm sorry. This is the last time. I don't know what came over me. You plan to live for 50 years? <laughs> you shouted at your mother. You shouted at your father. You shouted at God. God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And you are here lying just because you want to stand at the altar with a lay. I will now never shall in fact it from no no no. <laughs> I'm not saying be angry and be foolish. That's it's not an endorsement for being foolish. I hope you, you understand the balance. But that the wise wife or the business partner or whoever must know that there is a propensity for this. So I must create a system of accommodation. It's called tolerance. Thank you. Tolerance. There are people I already know that certain things are ever present with them. I've already factored in. in. Are we together? Some friends, some different people. I already know that some things will never change. There are people connected to me. I know I'll continue giving money all the time. I will never even bother doing any lecture on finance. It's a total waste of time. Some of us, they are our relatives. You know it. You, you, there's no point saying, look, everybody be empowered. You are wasting your time. Just trust God to be empowered very well and create a system around your life that helps them. You will buy sewing machine today. You will buy bicycle tomorrow. You will buy uh, two cows, male and female. The person will sell the other one before six months. There are people who you can't do anything. You need them. They are just careless. You can advise them. They sit down. They are writing. They stand up by next week. They've done exactly what you said they shouldn't do. So you don't forgive. You tolerate. That's not forgiveness. Is God speaking to us? Practice tolerance. Number six. Be a contributor to the growth of the relationship. This is a key one. Very soft what I'm teaching tonight, but it's important. No relationship grows in, indefinitely without a very significant contribution from the parties involved. You cannot continue to be a parasite indefinitely. No. It is not only financial or material things you can give. You can give prayer. You can give a good word. You can do something with your skill. Are we together? You can't be in a relationship with come David Dam. You can't be in a relationship with David Dam and every time you are saying, Ah, David Dam, you are going for ministration. Remember me, oh, if they give you your God, I beg, leave her for me. It can't be indefinite like that. One day David Dam will say, Look, the level of, of intimacy you want requires definition of what you are bringing to the table. Because the level of intimacy you require is not the general well meaning. You want me to remember you while away. What are you bringing? And then you say, Okay. I know that you usually get thirsty, so I found where to fetch water for you. You see that? I know that demons attack you frequently, so I've said I pray one hour for you every day. That's a contribution. Listen, let me advise, especially couples, whether you are about to marry or you are married, insist that you must know what you are bringing to the table. Don't generalize because the husband or the wife is nice. Children, you too. Don't just say you gave birth to me. You have to. When you get to a certain age, you should be a contributor. Even if it's not finances, you can clean the chair, you can weed the grass. There's nobody under my roof who will not do anything. No. You can't sleep and wake up and eat and sleep and wake up. If you don't pray, you will clean something. If you don't clean something, you must dress something. If you don't dress, you must go on errand. There is nothing that is neutral. Are we together? Any cloth in your life that is not serving you, give it away. Any book you are not reading and you are not going to read, give it away. Let everything in your life be based on contribution. And you will see how your life will rise. Even in your relationship with God, He spelled the terms. He told you the things you will get. I will manifest myself to you. He will anoint you. He will bless you. 
When they give you a job, they give you your letter of employment. Therein is spelled the terms of your relationship. We do that for every other thing except relationships. Why should Pastor Alpha continue to love Pastor Femi? Why should Pastor Femi continue to love Pastor Alpha? Why should I continue to love you? I've noticed that people don't like me. Have you noticed it too? The person says, yes, I noticed people don't like you. It's a message. One, you may not be valuable, but two, you want relationships that you are largely making parasitic. You are not contributing. I had headache, you didn't call me. When I had my own, did you call me? No. Are we together? Someone has to go out of his way to make relationships work. Be a contributor to the growth of the other party. And then seven, the last one, and we'll stop there. I never knew we'd have to get part three for this. Um, but then practice genuine love. Practice genuine love. Let me tell you this. One of the most painful things in a relationship is to discover for someone to discover come promise if i love promise and promise eventually finds out that all the while i really didn't love him i just had somewhere to go and i found out that he can help me get there so i was nice to him within the period of getting there is one of the ways great relationships die i've seen this happen with pastors I've seen this happen with business people. Ah, hey, Jimmy, I love you. Morning, he's calling a hey, Jimmy. Night, he's calling a hey, Jimmy. Next week, he's calling a hey, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, will I see you next week? And then a door just opens. And there's no a hey, Jimmy again. Because it was never about a hey, Jimmy. It was about me through you. Is your friendship genuine? Or are you just looking for something through people? Is God speaking to us now? Yes. Do I love you so much? I know how much I love you by how much I can be willing to stay even when nothing is coming from you. There are ladies who started relationships with men just because they are looking for daily bread. And the day the guy just said, Kai, this bread that I sell, something thieves just came and carried one whole bag of the flour of this. You call again and it's, it's number busy because you want to prosper through a man. What of brothers that is just food they are looking for? Because you don't cook. You found out that a sister's hand has been blessed. And all of us, so how are you? It's two days, I've not seen you. Abba. And uh, she said, in fact, I was even thinking of bringing something. Now you are talking. And then the day she tells you that, look, um, sorry, the money to cook is not there. He said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing into God. I'm busy. I don't have time for things of the world again. Our world is such a selfish place. Listen, if you ever want to rise through influence, there must be a track record of your genuine love for people. I love Pastor Petrov genuinely. I love his wife genuinely. I love all my pastor friends genuinely. Just like many of them love me genuinely. I know you love me genuinely, some of you. Many of you, but not all of you. It can't be all of you. I'll be fooling myself. But I know that at least you love me genuinely. You can be sure that I love you genuinely. I know Jesus loves me genuinely. Is that true? At least, it's, I know Satan doesn't love me, but I know Jesus loves me. I know my little children here love me. They love me more than you by far. Let me tell you. Your relationship life is intact when children love you. I've told you this. If children run away from you, it's a sign that there is a presence your understanding is creating. Because children are too innocent to run away from you. I love Jesus. Not just because the Bible tells me so. I love him because he has proven it again and again. And he's poured that same love. I love you. With all my heart. Do you look at all the relationships in your life today? Which one are you using and which one is real? Hello? We are going to pray. I want you to look at all the relationships in your life today. Which one do you know from beginning that is just a means to an end, not an end in itself? 
this guy is a prayer warrior let me just use him to scatter this because on my own i won't reach that gate i've already seen the giant that stands so let me partner with him let me use his voice to open that gate that's why many of us are not there for those we claim to love when they are down it's so painful for people to claim to love you and when you are down there's nobody there for you there are many of our people who are getting married here and there there are people who say they love them and never bring five naira promise you are getting married take ten naira <laughs> may the lord honor you you know this god that we talk about you don't love when you love you give you don't give money alone you give any and everything hallelujah it's true one of my greatest prayers is for god to help me to continue to love people is one of the keys i found to the anointing remaining and multiplying upon my life you can be dissipating spiritual energy in prayer and word study and not have love the bible says you are an empty symbol you must genuinely have love not just for god but for me i love god genuinely ask him he will tell you i don't love god because i'm looking for tea i don't love god because i'm looking for bread i don't relate with him just because i want him to meet my needs if i were doing that then there are many things i will not maybe i will just be praying once a week on friday lord bless koinonia thank you thank you because there's already rice on my table for monday and tuesday and wednesday bless koinonia but i love him i still go back to his presence and say lord i've come again you are my desire you are my pursuit you are my everything Many of you, it's your relationship with God that went sour, that made everything in your life to go sour. The first relationship to be restored is your relationship with God. Then your relationship with those that God has ever used to bless you. If God used them once, He can use them again. Do all you can to preserve the relationship. Do all you can. There are times I send many people text messages just like you don't get replies from me sometimes i don't get replies from them but i'm not offended because i know they are busy the most important thing is that i play my own part to make sure the relationships are there maintaining relationship is costly maintaining relationship with great men is costlier maintaining a relationship with god is the costliest of them all because it can cost you your life you can even die you will lose a lot of things relating with God. But you will gain a lot of things. You want to relate with people and not lose anything. You are selfish. You must lose something to stay. What are you willing to lose? You must lose your time to gain something. You must lose your time with God to gain the anointing. You must lose your time. There are times that you will have to lose your ego. To sit down before an uncommon mentor and hear him talk to you there are times you will need to lose your appetite you are hungry but the person talking to you has not finished you must sit down there and sit down for as long as he's talking relationships god has used relationships to lift me today I can't tell you, you know, sometimes I, I don't even want to share. I like being myself, but I don't want to share testimonies because they are very touching. I'm being very sober with you tonight because I want you to know this is how we gain influence. Relationships. Somebody told somebody about a message that blessed you. Somebody met somebody and gave him a koinonia message that brought you. Even to Jesus, somebody told you about Jesus. Even if he's an angel, he came as Angelus, a messenger, to connect you. Let's finish it. Give me five minutes. Let's not allow it go to part three. Number five. And we end for tonight. You want to contend for kingdom relevance. You must be unusually anointed. The last key, you must be unusually anointed. If you are just anointed, you will not do much. You must be unusually anointed to such a degree and such a level that you can 
do many things for the kingdom through the anointing that is upon your life. Listen, brothers and sisters, those who are generalists in the anointing, generalists, will not do anything much. You will keep competing one result today, no result tomorrow, one this today, no. Every time they invite me to go for ministrations, I am very happy because I know what the anointing is going to do to the people. It's going to change their lives. Those of you who are first timers who have come here now, I'm happy because while you are sitting, something is happening to you. You will get up and go back and wonder. It will look like a dream, the way God will turn your life around. Nothing just happens. Koinonia, I will drum this into your life. It is what is on you that controls what is around you. It first starts from what is in you. Then it comes to what is upon you. Then it brings things around you. If there is nothing upon you, creation will be so harsh to you, you will feel like dying. Is that true? Unusual anointing. The difference between any two people is not the God they believe in. The difference between any two people may not even be the revelation they are sharing. The difference between their results, hence their influence, will almost always be the level of grace. When you see what I'm doing and you see what Benihin is doing, it's not like he's using a different Bible from me. The difference is the level of anointing. The difference may not even be the dimension of the anointing. It's just the level of it. The difference between 1,000 Naira and 10,000 Naira is nine more 1,000s. Is that true? Sometimes what you need is just more of the same thing. You may not need anything new. Unusually anointed. Unusually anointed. And it will take you places you never dreamt you will go to. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, beloved in the Lord. I bring you the keys for transgenerational relevance. The highest of them is to be unusually anointed. When you are unusually anointed, then you are a blessing. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. When I say anointing, I don't just mean people falling on the floor shouting, Ah! 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 That, that, that's not anointing. Results. The ability to manipulate realities over people. Create a spiritual climate over a man that turns his life around. The anointing. I say to one, go, and he goeth. I say to another, come, and he comes. Immediately after the grace, there will be several people lining up here to see me. And many of them have issues. Whether I'm able to solve those problems is a different thing. How many people have come to you and you could not do anything about their situations? It's not like you are not anointed, but you need to operate at a higher level. A higher level. A higher level. That must be your cry. A higher level. Thank God for where he has brought you. But my brother, my sister, at this level of anointing, the nations will not demand your grace. At this level is your local environment that will demand your grace at this level of the anointing you need a level of anointing that will cause all men to seek for you as it is now all men cannot seek for you but all men seek for you we are going to pray I want you to be relevant I have taught you the keys number one you must know God number two you must contend for transformation Number three, you must be extremely valuable. Number four, you must master relationships. Even beginning from here, there are people you need in life and destiny. Swallow your pride. Bury your ego and maintain the requisite relationships it will take. So that when you are great and when they are great, even if you are not there, they will pick you through their greatness. Number five, be unusually anointed. The highest of the two riches, when it comes upon your life, then you will find out that principalities and powers will bow. You will find out that all men will seek for you. They will seek for the deposit of his grace that is upon your life. At that point, you will never beg for bread again. At that point, your voice cannot be silenced again. There is no cause and no yoke 
that will ever silence your voice. Are you ready to pray tonight? We are going to take five minutes. The prayer points are all that I mentioned. I'm just going to allow you with God for the next five minutes exactly. I want you to cry your heart in prayer and say, Lord, I want you to lift me. I want to begin to operate and activate these systems of the kingdom. Lord, I do not know you. Lord, I am not transformed. My limitation has pegged my growth to a point that I'm not able to do much. Lord, I confess that I am not valuable enough. I have flattered myself and gathered around psychophants in my life who have made me feel I'm more valuable than I really am. Lord, I have ignored relationships. I'm a man of God, but I've ignored valuable relationships. I've let my pride get in the way. I've let offense get in the way. And then, Lord, I'm anointed, but I'm not unusually anointed. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Outside pray. Those following online pray. You activate these five things. You have closed the door of mediocrity in your life forever. Doesn't matter what background you come from. Lord, I now see why poverty seems to trace and trail my life. Lord, I now see why no one is willing to listen to me. I now see why no one is willing to invest in your hand upon my life. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of my sin. Take over, take over. I have touched to the end of my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of my soul. Sing it with all your heart. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. I like you. To pray let me give you one more prayer point and say lord i will never be small let it be a vow you make with yourself lift your voice and pray lord is a determination the bible says i will multiply them they will not be few i will glorify them they will not be small lift your voice and pray lord i make a determination in the name of jesus christ that i will never never be small there is much to do for the kingdom. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, I decree and declare, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I declare the seed of greatness for the kingdom is within me. And I declare that church you have given me will not be small. That business you have given me, that anointing, that grace, that career, multiply my influence thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side would you mind me giving you one last one I want you to mention all the five points one by one especially for the areas where you know you are lacking some of you you don't have a problem with knowing god but your mind your mind 
there's something in your mind that is authorizing darkness to prevail over your life some of us were not exceptionally valuable for some of us we have ignored relationship open your mouth and mention them one by one grace oh god grace from heaven grace to press into the things of god grace to know you more grace to know you more in prayer in fastings in the study of the word in corporate fellowship please make sure you are praying love your destiny enough to pray love your children enough to pray love your generation enough to pray lord i cry for transformation something about my background something about my culture something about my sociological perspectives is affecting my life affecting my growth affecting my influence i cry to you oh god of heaven alter my mind alter my thinking alter my paradigm alter my perspectives change my perceptions lord i receive grace to be so valuable to be needed and useful valuable in ministry valuable in business valuable in my career valuable in my profession valuable as a man of god valuable as a woman of god i obtain that grace in the name of jesus lord i receive grace for strategic relationships send to my life men and women that are gates to my next level grant me the fortitude to maintain those relationships grant me the wisdom to maintain those relationships lastly cry for the anointing father send more fire greater fire fresh fire new dimensions of the anointing new dimensions of the anointing expand my spiritual horizon let your hand rest upon me in a way that the nations will know that your hand is upon my life let your hand rest upon koinonia greater results greater signs greater wonders greater dimensions of the operation of the spirit hallelujah please lift your hands let me pray for you our time is This is how people become relevant from absolutely nothing. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. The grace that it takes to know God, to be and stay transformed, to be exceptionally valuable, to master relationships, and to knock on the gate of heaven until new dimensions come to you. I pray that that grace be released upon your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy to you that where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every force that is fighting your influence, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that those powers live your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I spoke to you about two riches. Whichever you do not have in your life, I command a supply of it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as a corporate people, we decree and declare that you are increasing our greatness. And you are comforting us on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and I call you not just a person but a voice. I declare from today be a voice. In your career become a voice. In ministry become a voice. In healing become a voice. In the prophetic become a voice. In business become a voice. In the academics become a voice. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that no one will be able to silence your voice. What has not been done by your loved ones, by your father, your mother, I empower you by influence to do it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands and give Jesus all the praise.
Thank you, Jesus. Say, Father, every single petition, every single need, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that they are turned to testimonies tonight. Shabado katu sada brati gede balada bush. Rekete paroda sada balada balakata frada skale barya kata. Shekoto skabarunda skabarya kata frada balada bush. We receive by faith. We receive by faith. We receive by faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is a God that doeth wonders and he will do mighty things in our midst tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you prophesy to two or three people that God is about to do mighty things in your life? Mean it from your heart. God is about to do mighty things in your life. Don't be surprised when you see your life changing. Don't be surprised when you see doors opening. Don't be surprised when you encounter new anointings. God bless you. Please be seated. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. This is our first miracle service for 2018. Hallelujah. We're going to put our hands together again. Let the devils know we're back again. Back again. Back again. Miracles back again. Breakthroughs back again. Signs and wonders back again in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. I'm excited in my spirit because I know that God will change someone's life. It never tires me to hear the testimonies of the hand of God over the lives of people. Sometimes it's just like day and night. And God did it. And God wiped my tears. And God took away cancer. And God took away this infirmity. And God forced a wicked man to respond to me. And God did this and that. The God that doeth wonders. A wonder is a miracle with a message in it. You see that? Yes. When your miracle does not have a message, it's not a wonder. There must be a message in it. It's a statement. Like Julius Berger built a house and writes there, B. When you see it, you are not confused. You see the level of the architecture. Then they tell you they are the one. So God does certain things in your life and puts his signature and says, I am the God that doeth wonders. That's what will happen to you tonight. In the name of Jesus. There's a lot to do tonight. I will just admonish us very quickly. I'm not really preaching. I just want to communicate a few things that the Lord put in my spirit. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. The more I seek to understand God, the more I align to understand His ways. I'm amazed at the things that I discover about God alongside the reasons why we seldom see magnificent dimensions of his power and his grace and I am humbled and forced to admit that God is a good God and there is something really wrong with our understanding of him hallelujah and this is one of the keys that I want to share with us there's a separate series coming that will deal with this but then the Lord just has one question for us tonight written in our requests written upon the tablets of our hearts are several needs and miracles that we trust the Lord to bring some of us healing miracles some of us are here to encounter higher levels of grace some of us are trusting God for influence prosperity access to revelation breakthroughs all kinds of things and there's a very simple question can God trust you this is my admonishment tonight can God trust you 
it looks like a very simple statement very basic but this is the reason why many people may never be granted access to the deep things of God can God trust you Matthew 25 let's read from verse 14 for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods and unto one he gave five talents to another two to another one to every man according to his ability and straightway he took his journey and he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made other five talents and likewise he that had received two he also gained other two but he that received one went and dug in the earth and hid the lord's money after a long time the lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents saying lord thou deliverest unto me five talents behold i have gained besides them five talents more and his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things i will make thee a ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of the lord same thing happened with the second person and then let's go to 24 then he that had received the one talent came and said lord i know thee that thou art a hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not spread and I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast what is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful, or other versions say, unfaithful servant. Thou knowest that I reap where I sweat not, and gather where I have not sown or spread. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with interest. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him that had ten talents. The last verse. For unto everyone that hath shall be given. And he that have abundance. And he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he had. there is so much i believe with all my heart that in this season the lord wants to reveal and commit to his body please listen the lord wants to commit new and greater dimensions of the anointing the lord wants to commit higher and superior levels of influence the lord wants to commit access the lord wants to commit prosperity like never before but there is one question can god trust me can god trust you it's always been a question of trust not his ability trust can god trust you with the anointing that you seek can god trust you with the level of increase and access can god trust you with classified spiritual information can you be a faithful steward of the mysteries of the kingdom are we together can god trust you with the children you are trusting that he gives you can god trust you with the ministry that you desire that he gives you can god trust you with the increase you know many times we don't think about these things all we want is god give me lord you have to answer me wipe my tears change my story you see a lot of people saying lord give me money give me prosperity and i can imagine the lord looking from heaven can i trust you are we together god never trusts people he has not tested god does not trust you by faith no sir no sir no sir notice that in this parable the bible says when you read from verse 14 it says that there was a man that man was obviously a wealthy man and the man had assets had possessions etc and then the bible says that he had three servants three workers notice now the bible does not give us the details of how he recruited them 
but it was very clear from the context of this scripture that he had been watching them is that true and the bible says that on the strength of his his observation he gave unto one five talents he gave unto one two talents he gave unto one one talent notice how correct he was by the results that were produced he had been watching them there was a day he gave them certain things and he observed their stewardship and he now gave one five talents two talents and did not supervise them he left and then the bible says after a long time he came back to find out which of them still had a sense of stewardship and the bible says two out of the three one had multiplied and kept good stewardship of what he was given same thing with the other and there was an angry greedy jealous and unserious one who really deserved one in fact deserved none true he was waiting in anger for the master to come observe many things wrong with this guy he was irresponsible he was not willing to learn because the other two were his colleagues he would have easily met them and said what did you do with the five and two he had access to people who had results are we together so you wouldn't say that the mentor was not there but they were people all of them were trained by the same person meaning he was not a listener there was something about his arrogance that was becoming glaring i'm sure he was offended for being committed one you see that and then when the master came he said mr five talents what have you done he said this is what i've done i have multiplied your estate i've multiplied your assets the other person with the two the same thing and then he said how about you he said, i've been waiting for you now you will hear from me i know you are a hard man i know it from the lecture i know it from the way you don't like me i know it from the way you shut me down when i try to interrupt you as you talk and so I thought that it would be a waste of time to pay attention to you. Anyway, just to let you know, I didn't lose anything. Here's what you gave me. You sow seeds, not talents. You see that? And he dug it in the earth and gave the man. And the man said, you are a wicked and unprofitable servant. He said, at least if you could not produce the result yourself, why don't you give those who can produce it? Are you seeing you did not your problem was not your inability to produce result it was your pride you would have handed it to someone who could produce the result and i would have credited it that you were a humble person though ignorant you were both ignorant and arrogant are we together trust there are so many people listen you know we live in a society where we admire results and results are wonderful but if you've been in this house for a long time you know that god has taught us to observe how results come not just to celebrate the appearance of results there are men of god who want the anointing there are so many people who want i think one of the major problems of people now is this money thing prosperity finances money oh god arise oh god give money oh god wipe our tears and god says look there is nothing wrong with my abundance you have a problem with your country not me you see that and then god is asking a question to everyone listening can i trust you can i trust you to be a faithful steward with my people there are men of God who want crowds. We celebrate crowds. We want God to. Can I trust you to burden yourself and meet them at the point of their needs? I want expansion in ministry. Can I trust you to sustain capacity enough to deliver at all times? Lord, connect me to great people. Can I trust you with access to their information? listen this is a very powerful message very powerful can god trust you with money can god trust you with men can god trust you with influence can god trust you with the anointing these are the priceless commodities that make for great men can god trust you god has 
tested people with the anointing and they made a mess a mess of it god trusted people with money they made a mess of it god trusted people with information they made a mess of it there are many destinies today some of our loved ones sadly who would never be where they were if they knew how to be trusted with information god brought them to men and women of influence and they abused the privilege of access and did not know how to keep information other people anointings god brought them the anointing and they did not find out how the anointing remains they were more passionate about let me tell you something success just like the anointing and any other thing the easiest part of it is the arrival the maintenance of anything given by god is harder than the reception are we together the hardest part of the easiest part of prosperity is the arrival of resources maintaining it takes a lot of discipline maintaining the anointing the glory of god upon your life maintaining influence maintaining relationships all of these priceless things the simple question god is asking us tonight is can i trust you can i trust you with the answers to your requests can i trust you lord i want admission can i trust your heart when you get admission lord i want a job the brother came and shared about his job and when he mentioned the amount people were clapping can god trust you i must be a millionaire that's not the issue can god trust you god gave you thirty thousand. you struggled for one month to pay your tithe and god says you see this i love you too much to increase you so that it does not destroy you are we together i shared it i think it was last week that it, it was it was a statement i heard from a man of god and the lord reminded me again in my place of retreat that there are certain people who cannot be trusted with deep spiritual things because they have not built capacity to manage the the contentions in the spirit that come along with that level there are levels of prosperity that when god gives you the kinds of attack that comes your prayer life your word life and your spiritual stability cannot accommodate that level of lifting so god's withdrawal of it is an act of his love for you are we together the bible says an heir as long as he's a child he said differeth not from a slave there is no difference but he's under tutors and governors who mentor him until the time appointed for him to come into the fullness of sonship so the question is i watch people and truly speaking sometimes i i can feel i can feel the burden of god's frustration if i use that word while i minister to people because i know that their desires will not be answered it's a very difficult thing as a man of god to pray for someone you already know the prayer will not be answered and yet you cannot tell the person because of this key that the individuals have not sustained the ability to be trusted with that level of grace there are men of god who desire superior levels of the anointing almost every week you see me leave this place maybe past 12 I've had a week long of activities just returning um, to Mzari and right here have another conference you know and all of that can you be that much of a servant when God gives you the anointing or will you now begin to merchandise the anointing and say you know that I'm busy and all of that those who have money join this queue those who are still trusting God join the other one can God trust you is God speaking to anyone man of god i want to be able to see in the spirit and hear in the spirit and then do what with the information that's my question what happens when god grants you access to the deep secrets of people do you have the psychological stability to sit under such classified information and be quiet i want to become a great man of god what do you do as you counsel people as they open up their life 
deep secrets that sometimes even as couples they do not know even as family members informations that only the individual and god and you being the next do you have the fortitude to be silent in the midst of plenty are we together let's be honest with ourselves and not turn god into a fool this trust is one of the greatest keys to seeing the outstretched arm of god there are people who cannot be trusted with certain levels of revelation can you be trusted with such depth of the prophetic and be in a meeting and you are seeing everything and then they give you a mic and then you can just come up and pray for one minute and regardless of what you are seeing you drop the mic back and sit down there is always that itch i i want to sit down but look uh, I, kai i'm seeing something now we will now add that carelessness to the revelation and make it look like it's the holy spirit that is controlling all the only thing he's sponsoring is the revelation it is your flesh that is adding the lack of stability but because you are flowing in the spirit supposedly everybody thinks is the holy spirit that is responsible for all of the outcome can you be trusted we need the anointing but can you be trusted lord i want my own house i'm tired of rent can you be trusted with maintaining it as god's house lord i want to be a kingdom financier and then god says you have one hundred and ten thousand empty it and you say i cast that voice it can't be god abba something that i've said for how many months and god says and you you are mentioning 100 million with no respect you want to die it's amazing how we do not think about the cost dimensions of the things we desire from god we want it do you know why we want it because we hope that by acquiring things it will change people's perceptions about us so you are wearing a nice suit we are wearing a nice this so it will make someone look at you and respect you no things were never supposed to be the basis of our confidence let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me not the value in his bank account not the hair not the shoe not the clothes my simple question before we begin to pray is can god trust you if you cannot answer this question tonight then you deserve to go on a retreat hallelujah there are so many families in need of children the man is praying that god will give him a child and you watch the way he's managing his wife you watch the way he's managing the car that's how you are going to manage a baby sent from heaven and god says no way can i trust you you saw somebody's child and slapped the child as if just because the bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child it should not surprise you when a child is foolish and you beat someone's child as if you are beating your age mate and say god i'm waiting for my own god says no way this is not how things come from heaven you must be proven are we together you are staying in another man's rented apartment the water is leaking you don't care because you say it's not my apartment is that true everything is spoiling and you don't care i won't waste my money and then the lord is watching you and you are there prophesying and making a fool of yourself and saying one day i'll have my own and i will have tenants do you not know you are programming a harvest and god says for the sake of my mercy i will keep you at this level until you qualify by being trustworthy i have watched specific people enter certain dimensions they were not praying for simply because of trust i repeat myself brothers and sisters can god trust you with the anointing he got you filled with the holy spirit you are wasting the ministry of the holy spirit already and you want more power you are not utilizing the person of the holy spirit so what do you need the anointing for can you keep and maintain the anointing let me tell you this anointing you've heard me say it. the anointing is like a knife there is a way you hold it it can kill you the holder of it 
are we together have you seen people use a knife and injure themselves by mistake it wasn't the nice fault it was something about the way you held it we desire the anointing and God wants to commit it but the question is can we be trusted can you be sleeping and God wakes you and says intercede for ABC for the next three hours and your own prayer request is not there can you carry out the anointing and have several challenges yourself and God does not even allow you to pray for them you are there praying for others do you have the fortitude to survive that hallelujah we need the anointing in our lives but can God trust us how about influence there are some of us who have lost precious people in our lives not physical death we've lost certain levels of influence because we could not manage it the Bible says listen carefully it says that Joseph when Joseph was granted access to become the prime minister right paraphrasing that he was wise in his dealings he understood that he was not an Egyptian and he made sure he kept attracting the favor of Pharaoh to the point that Pharaoh gave gifts and said go and give your father ask them to come hallelujah there are many people who pray for favor the man of God prophesies favor to your life and then um, let me have someone come this brother is praying for favor are we together now please come pastor Femi and he's praying Lord give me access to pastor Femi please stand here and this is this guy's prayer and he's just praying then a man of God standing representing the presence and the power of God prophesies may you find favor and the Holy Spirit plays his own role by bringing you to a place of influence see that and now this man is discussing with his fellows and just because you have access through favor to listen to their conversations you do not have the ability to keep yourself psychologically sound you go around and say these men are discussing one billion five billion and somebody says which one let me go and beg him let me tell you what the foolish beggar would do he says sir don't be offended you see that man <laughs> he was discussing something that was attractive me my own is just rent of 120 and he said who told you and he points that he will give him the 120 and drive you that beggar has replaced your position because of foolishness the holy spirit answered your prayer lack of wisdom took you back to Egypt are we together now there are people who sit among great people come as an act of favor and they hear people talking discussing politics God is blessing you instead of you to behave yourself wisely I'm showing you how not trustworthy many people are you listen to their conversations and later on you now run your mouth and say sorry sir i don't know who you are but sorry this thing you are saying the news i don't know which newspaper you follow but the one ah no now was it not efcc that did this thing and you are talking even hitting the person on the chest and then later they will tell you that person is the manager of what your father is looking for a job he's looking for a contract there and the person will say who brought this small boy into this place they say drive him and let him never come again prayer answered foolishness reverses us back i really really want god to bless us are we together i won't lie to you if you are not trustworthy there are certain things that will be far from you anointing prosperity relationships influence i have seen men of god who go to the churches of other people and just because they have the anointing they do not have that ability to maintain trust you just move around and start speaking to everyone and say stand up you don't know which man of god is which stand up and say, stand up what am i seeing you are this uh, are you this and that and then you find out that this is an overseer somewhere probably they were considering inviting you and your foolishness locks a door that would have granted you access to meet your destiny helpers
you must know how to behave yourself wisely signs and wonders is not just a charm that happens to people anyhow there is a protocol there is a system hallelujah praise the lord can you be trusted with relationships can you be trusted with valuable relationships advantageous connections can god bring people of influence in your life and then you don't become a parasite and a nuisance to them are we together now yes i've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy and blessed people god is my witness i never if we are in a restaurant with them i pay for it both myself and them I will fight to make sure that I don't allow that. Let me tell you what many of us will do. We finish and say, Sahaba, you that uh, you have this thing, me that so your boys are struggling. And the man looks at you and says, this guy is not an advantage to me. Go. You see, demons don't just walk anyhow. They observe your weakness and build a fortification around it. If your weakness is lack of wisdom, that becomes their access point. You can be delivered. You can fall and rise. Our hearts are full of faith, but many believers, our heads are empty. There's no strategy. There is no wisdom. So we are full of faith, but we never rise strategically. Or we cannot maintain our lifting. Can God trust you with relationships? Are we together? Mm -hmm. Can God trust you with influence? Influence. The ability to compel loyalty from people is a dangerous thing to be influential. You know, there's a statement on easy lies the head that wears the crown. Listen very carefully. It's a miracle service. The miracle has already happened. Are we together? This that I'm giving you, maybe second to salvation, is one of the greatest miracles that is happening in this place this night. Then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture. The system of God is something that we must study. Otherwise, we will keep mocking and flattering ourselves with one testimony today, never to have another one tomorrow. And you see, when your life is void of predictable results, you will be angry, you will be resentful, you will begin to hate people. You will look exactly like the man with one talent. Can God trust you with influence? You have access to people. You can say, Pastor Femi, go and remove this tie and bring it. And he says, yes, sir. Take gentleman remove this your watch and give me god said it and he believes in the word of god upon you can you have the discipline to be shown his bank account and see one million and keep quiet not to say sir now that i've i've encouraged you please encourage me too and the man said i don't have anything he says it's not true you have five hundred and seventy eight thousand eighty nine cobble and best say it's true now that was not the holy ghost the gift was from God. The use was from a mindset that has not been well constructed by God. Are we together? He gave unto them five, two, one, according to their abilities. Then he collected from one that had one. I thought he would keep it to himself. The goal was never to keep it to himself. He gave the guy that now had ten to have eleven sometimes depletion in your life is not a message from satan depletion in your life is a message from god to you that your stewardship is under attack are we together when resources begin to deplete mysteriously when relationships begin to deplete mysteriously when influence begins to deplete mysteriously it's not just a call to go and pray and bind it's the time to pray inquiry prayers lord what is going on why is it that i could call this woman yesterday and she would pick but now i am calling her and she's saying sorry i'm in a meeting why am i i mean the top five people who were channels of favor in my life are now too busy for me it's a message 
It's not just something, no, there must be a spirit. Oh, oh God, I write it, prayer point number one, prayer point number two. No, let's be intelligent in our approach. It is a message from God to you that you are, something is wrong with your stewardship. All of a sudden, you go for a meeting and the power, the grace and the glory of God does not flow. You find out that there is a struggle with revelation. It happens in one meeting. You give an excuse that the people didn't fast. It happens in another meeting. You give an excuse that the sound was not very nice. After five meetings, go for a retreat quickly. Depletion is proof that your stewardship is being questioned from the realm of the spirit. Because the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter. Are we together? I'm teaching you the systems of the kingdom. When you see things that used to work in your life and all of a sudden in a succession, not just one area of your life, in a succession, doors begin to close. Could it be that you are becoming the man with one talent? This is the miracle that some of us need right now. I know some of us came believing that, look, it, it can be. I was a millionaire 2004 and then now I'm going down and right now I don't even have up to 100,000 in my account. There must be a spirit. I know that apostle is going to speak one word. When I fall under the anointing and rise, that will be over. Listen, I don't want you to be frustrated. It could be that that withdrawal is God's mercy to you he pegged you at a level he rated you and saw the highest level where your stewardship was at his best and kept you there notice that there are certain blessings that come to us no matter how much it reduces to reach a threshold and remains there there are some people let me use finances as an instance they never cross two hundred thousand. give them five million something will happen but when it's now within the range of two hundred thousand, it will remain in the account it is the level you have been pegged in the spirit as the level that will allow you become most faithful over god's resources are we together Lord, I want to marry a man of God. God says, can I trust you with the assignment I have given him? Not the influence he has, the assignment. Can you stand the persecution? Everybody calling you a witch, stupid woman. She's eating church money to buy shoe and still keep quiet and say, Lord, bless these members. Or will you be the reason members will leave the man of God's church and say, I love this man, but his wife is a stranger. Can you sit in the midst of great power and still go down on your knees before God? Or you will be conscious, ah, let me not kneel down before all these more children. Let them not think I'm... <clears throat> David danced before God. Danced before God. And the daughter of Saul, his wife, said, Abba, O oh king, have you forgotten you are royalty? Don't, uh, you are falling your hand. David said, I'm dancing before the God who collected the kingdom from your father and gave to me. While that discussion was going, God was listening. And she died not having a child. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Listen, I believe that one of the signs that God wants to produce in this ministry is a combination of strange levels of the anointing and strange levels of prosperity these two dimensions i really believe that god wants to bring it in a superior dimension in this house but the question is can god trust you there are people who will stop going to church stop going to the house of god if they have a house a car and maybe some a few millions in the account do you know that there are certain levels of increase truly speaking that when you get to you will not have any personal prayer request again really 
so what will you do with your prayer time what will the five hours in his presence be spent for because now there seem to be legitimate reasons you can take every prayer request one one hour and before you know it is five hours your pain keeps you there but what if the pain is taken away may god never give me anything he cannot take back it's my miracle service prayer for myself may god never give me any influence any anointing any access you know how children behave that you give them something and say give me back and they refuse that's how many of us are it belongs to him and any day and any time he makes demand of it let it go in a heartbeat abraham take now thy son thy only son don't try to tell me he's the only one i know and i know you love him rise up the mountain the bible said abraham got up early in the morning carried isaac and was on his way to go today we say abraham's blessings are ours and jesus said if ye be the children of abraham then you will do the works of abraham sacrifice death it belongs to him that if god commits the anointing to you you will not go back home and begin to merchandise and then when you hear your pastor of your local assembly preaching you now say look at this man here the nonsense is preaching misguided revelation no power what am i doing in this church open to the book of ah, first kings chapter four that's where he's going and you become like the man with the one talent and then you find out the last meeting you went to is the last do you think you are anointed doors suddenly close not all closed doors are demonic god closes doors he can shut it and no man can open including a man of god he shuts it to keep you it is his way of bringing preservation so that you will not be lost hallelujah increase can bring pride money can bring pride anointing can bring pride you see i've had the privilege of hosting god's anointing to a measure and i know what the anointing can do the anointing can turn you to become like a god human beings can worship you if necessary it is up to you to not be foolish and rent your garment if need be and say look i know i'm divine but don't forget i'm human my dominion is shared dominion not absolute dominion there are many of us who will not look for honor but when you get it and it's rising beyond the level you know should be you won't stop it it's still seen i know how far god has taken me and when i see human beings about to dehumanize themselves in the name of honoring the grace of god upon my life i must behave myself wisely to say no no you have honored me enough i get the message don't go beyond this and god says i can trust you with more I was at Benny Hinn's meeting last week and while I sat down and I was just watching the man of God minister the grace the power the presence I said what level of trust did this man show God that granted him this level of grace with a single word brothers and sisters miracles were happening as though it was a charm rising from wheelchairs as if people as if they said everybody stand up casually and it was not an issue to him all the honor and the glamour there it didn't concern him at all when he got up and took the mic he was you could see his heart crying in the presence of god i said that's it that's a man who has met presidents he does not meet a president a president meets him and calls it a privilege and yet he can kneel down before god and roll like a child please let's learn a lesson tonight there is something about our understanding that is making our prayers look like it is not answered especially for those of us here who have come to receive the impartation you will get it this is not a thing of age this is not a thing of level it's a thing of alignment through knowledge hallelujah i have watched people with little honor and i've seen the way they have misused the grace of God given to them and this is the message God put in my heart to share with us shortly we are going to rise and we are going to be celebrating the hand of God here 
some of you who are coming here for the first time i'm sure you have followed online you have followed the teachings or you have heard testimonies of what god is doing with the man of god this is the man of god this is all of me so take now that you have seen me take your eyes away and trust the god of heaven to surprise you this is all jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher jesus you be lifted higher Let my king be Let my king Let my king be Let my king be lifted up. Let it be a revelation. Let my king be lifted Not Joshua Selman. Not Koinonia. Not miracles. Not anointing. Oh, Sana, you have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. That's my testimony tonight. Hey, you have captured my heart, consumed my heart, consumed my heart. Your love. Sing it from the depth of your heart as a revelation. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. If all I say, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough enough to take away every pain and every demon but if all i say is jesus 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 that's more than enough listen to me the first miracle god is giving you tonight listen is the humility to be able to say lord no matter where you take me no matter what you give me i remain yours forever nothing will ever be able to take your place in my life not power not money not anointing not miracles not influence let me tell you if you can pass this test tonight then there is no limit to what god can do in your heart lift your voice and pray passionately to god thank you go ahead Lord, I can't be trustworthy. Go ahead and pray. Walk on my heart. Walk on my tendencies. Walk on my heart. Walk on pride. If all I say, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Pray. From the depth of your heart. If all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Let it be your prayer. The miracle is already happening to you. Sing, you have captured my heart. The secret of the mighty hand of God upon a man. You have and I, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, not if Joshua Selman, not if Koinonia, thank God for the honor. But if I be lifted up, then I will draw. 
beyond revelation beyond gimmicks i will draw all men to myself I'd like you to pray and cry to God father mercy upon my tendencies my tendencies with money my tendencies with pride I cry this is the miracle service happening to us already lift your voice and pray leave the issue of house and sickness pray pray <laughs> forget about your business forget about ministry forget about all of these things just focus on yourself Lord make me trustworthy make me trustworthy hallelujah is God speaking to us the next prayer point Lord every idol in my heart listen allow me say it first before you pray do you know what an idol is is something you cannot live without something that assumes the place of God a job can be an idol a wife can be an idol a husband can be an idol a boyfriend a girlfriend an uncle can be an idol the government can be an idol revelation can be an idol bible study can be an idol even prayer can be an idol when your attention leaves jesus to prayer idolatry is happening there subtly you are more concerned about the motions than the contact with a real person. It's idolatry. Are we together? God wants to bless us. I came to pour my heart because I really want God to help us. Father, there are things in my life that it looks like I cannot do without them. Destroy that tendency in me. Whoever told you until your account is fat, you cannot sleep well. Who lied to you? Who made money such an idol? There are some of us, whether or not you need money, once there is nothing in your account, you can't sleep. Abba. Some of us will not be able to sleep because of marriage. When will the man come? When will the woman come? It's idolatry. I know you need a miracle in that regard. God will give it, but it's still idolatry. Lord, when will the ministry come? When will I start having ushers and peers around? And God says, I watch your heart. Idolatry. Lord, when will the anointing on apostle come upon my life? So that I will also make a name. So that this will happen and God says, no way. You must be emptied of yourself for the life that I now live I live by the faith of the Son of God sing Lord I will bow I will bow to you to no other God but you Lord Lord, I will worship you. Nothing hands have made. Nothing hands have made. But you, Lord. I will lay down my idols. Come on, sing with me. And I will lay down my idols. And thrones I have made. And all that has taken. My heart, sing, Lord, I will bow, Lord, I will bow to you, to no other God but 
Blessed is the man that God can find trustworthy. Blessed is the woman. I'm telling you, you have not seen what God can do in your life till he finds you worthy of trust. You have not seen the kind of husband God can give until he finds you trustworthy. You have not seen the kind of wife God can give until he finds you trustworthy you have not seen money you've not seen nothing i'm not talking business you have not seen suffering wealth until god can trust your heart you've not seen influence and anointing you've not seen revelations yet until he can trust your heart we are praying don't mind the time god wants to deal with our life specifically Please pray. Leave the miracles. They will happen in a moment. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me. Anoint my everything Take my everything I release my everything You have everything Say Take all of me All of me Lord. You have my everything Take all of me All of me Take all of me, 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 take one last prayer from the depth of your heart lord dethrone everything that is above you in my life no matter what it is i dare you to pray that prayer dethrone it whatever has found its way to rise above you dethrone it in my life the quest for success the appetite for influence the pride of life vain glory in accomplishments dethrone it that you be the lord seated above and alone in a place guarded in my life by your jealousy take all of me use all of me take all of me use all of me Take all of me. Shalakata prakata sedega de balada balada bo. Shaka kapara kato sada brande gala karya kato siada bala. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that we have done the first things first, you can now pray and say father now that i've given you my heart let everything that mocks you in my life bow to your name tonight lift your voice and pray everything if it's sickness let it go please pray lord i have come tonight 
Rakata Barunde Scalabaria Kata Proske de Belekata. Every oppression of darkness, let it give way right now. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I'll be ministering will be very fast. Very fast. It is very easy for the Holy Spirit to bring healing miracles deliverances to a life that is surrendered the problem is usually our hardness our hardness of heart makes it difficult difficult for god to find expression there are people gathered here under all kinds of strange influences carrying all kinds of devils one word i tell you is enough to set you free provided your heart is open it's not in the motions it's authority authority keep your hands lifted please just keep your hands lifted I'm just acting as the Lord is leading me the anointing of the Spirit is upon my life now now the Lord is asking me to count five at the fifth count please bring all the people under the anointing at the fifth count at the fifth count Jesus I give you praise one Hmm. two my goodness three four get ready now five i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus inside and outside there is a reason why i ask you to bring them out the lord is bringing strange miracles to people right now over Overflow one outside. I see mighty angelic activities there. Shabraketo salabariakata. Mambre eteka deko salabar. Subrega de galabala rabush. Shakatos kabarandas kadabrakatosia. The authority of the king is in this place. Kalabaros sadabarakato shagres. Elekate bros kadabarakata barosia dabala daba. Asha barakato sabria dabala dabala daba. There is an anointing that is coming on these people. This set of people. This is not deliverance. This is a, there is an anointing. There is a kind of wine. There is a kind of oil that I'm seeing that is coming on this specific group of people. It's a strange level of grace and wine. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You reign. You ancient iron skin. Kadosh. Kadosh. Mighty on your throne. Break forth. Down fountains of the deep. And weep Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Please lift your hands. I'm seeing written in the air revelation. The spirit of revelation. I don't know why God is starting this way. But I'm stretching my hands. There are people that are receiving a baptism of the spirit of revelation. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. At the count of three, let it be yours. One, two, three. Take it, it's yours. The spirit of revelation granted access. To the deep things of the spirit access access receive it the gate is open the gate is open in the spirit access 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 to the depths of the spirit i give you eyes that see and ears that hear access to the deep things of the spirit mighty on your throne mighty on your throne mighty on your throne he is mighty in this place mighty in this place mighty in this place hallelujah now listen 
the lord is bringing deliverance to families and hear me this is the sign i'm seeing people burning physical fire on them it's like altars on fire but physical individuals are becoming representatives of it in the name of jesus i stretch my hands right now that fire that brings deliverance at the count of three in the name of jesus i release it all over this place one two three let that fire fall right now let that fire fall right now i challenge thrones dominions the works of darkness hallelujah i want to pray there are spirits that are behind the undoing of many families there are spirits that are behind many infirmities there are spirits that are behind many predictable patterns are you ready for for total freedom not partial freedom that you come back tomorrow lift your hands now you are ready to shout jesus something is happening in this place listen at the count of three i want you to shout at the top of your voice and in the name of jesus as you shout at the top of your voice this family is under strange attack this family in the name of jesus christ by the anointing of the holy spirit i decree and declare the foundation of evil in this family comes under judgment right now in the name of jesus bring her out are you ready to shout it's not a careless shout shout it with your might and your heart and you watch what happens to the gates of hell lord i pray that the force is tying down families tying down destinies tying down breakthroughs in this year of signs and wonders i pray that you arise oh god of jeshurun in the shout of your people let there be total deliverance are you ready at the count of three one two three let there be deliverance right now i cause devils i cause spirits i cause enchantments divination operations of witchcraft all the overflows those following online i place a sanction on the works of darkness please lift your hands and pray you are here in this place and all you have seen in your life is closed doors closed doors closed doors i'm about to speak to you by the spirit closed doors the anointing for open doors is about to be released on certain people now lord where are they in the name that is above all names anyone here under the influence of any closed door i stretch my hands now take that grace take that grace for open doors take that grace take that grace take that grace please help them take that grace i open the doors doors of breakthrough doors of breakthrough doors of breakthrough hallelujah the lord wants to end please listen we are flowing very fast for the sake of time listen for when your word comes there are families that are tied with patterns the same thing happens to everybody regardless of what geographic region they are almost graduating they catch you from malpractice then something else happens to someone then something else happened someone wants to get married after introduction there is problem another person has the same thing they are called patterns they are programmed by a covenant but tonight in the name that is above all names i decree and declare get set because fire is about to fall to break all kinds of patterns are you ready now at the count of three i want you to shout that name that is above all names and at the shout of that name 
every pattern in every family both for you and your loved ones connecting by faith that there be liberty are you ready one two three I break patterns be broken now patterns be broken now ordinances that cause repetition be broken now open up the gates shake it take it take it take it shake it take up the second time hey 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 will you open up the gate open up the door Will you open up, say, open up the gate? We're making a decree in the realm of the spirit. Open up the door. Will you open up the gate? Open up the gate. The gate. Open up the door. Hallelujah goodness bring that lady this lady you are holding come hold on don't worry just keep my house come down as i stood there i saw a very strange kind of oppression in this lady's family and if we leave her to sit down there you will think she's free but it's not over in the name of jesus i cursed the devil that is back of this tragedy it's time for you to go this is koinonia a place of god's presence and power and i dislodge every force of darkness be gone now in the name of jesus christ forever 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 in the name of jesus overflow three i just want you to watch your screen just overflow three I want to pray for you the lord is ministering something to me the overflow in the building there overflow three at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus i see massive angelic activities happening there overflow three are you ready now at the count of three one two three let there be miracles right now let there be breakthroughs breakthroughs supernatural breakthroughs supernatural breakthroughs supernatural breakthroughs supernatural breakthroughs hallelujah hallelujah praise Jesus praise Jesus praise Jesus Stella Stella I'm hearing a name Stella 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 Jalako Siara Kato Sabria Kato Siara Brandos Calabros Kadabaro Kushiara Calabaros Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.